It's not clickbait. I really am ending the vlog. The monthly update vlogs, that is. Gotcha. <laughs> so I guess this will be the very last monthly update vlog. So we're going to go out in style. Going to change some things up. This is going to be the new uh, direction of the channel, as well as going over some personal life stuff and things like that. Wow, that was very much out of order from how I normally do things. But Andy here, and uh, we're gonna go over some YouTube -y stuff as well as personal life stuff. So let's get into the YouTube -y stuff. As I said at the top of the episode, we're not gonna be doing any more monthly update vlogs for the channel. I've decided that moving forward, that type of uh, content, video, whatever, is not really conducive long-term to what I wanna do with the channel. I mean, it's nice for like a little update and stuff for the month, but like, let's be honest here, nobody's really gonna give two shits on a fucking holler about what I did February 2012. Woo. <laughs> so they have basically a very short shelf life and I'm looking to produce stuff that's a bit more, um, as the kids say, evergreen, a bit more long-term. So that's the direction we're gonna be going into moving forward with the channel. Two things that you can expect uh, from me this year, content-wise, is more Life After Navy stuff. I've decided to refocus a lot of what I do on the YouTubes and focus more on answering you guys' questions about the Navy, being a bit more honest, a bit more open, a bit more candid, whatever word you want to use to describe my openness involving the Navy. Now, obviously, I can't go over, like, classified information or stuff like that, but I can be a bit more honest about my opinions about certain aspects of the Navy that I really couldn't with the NFAC series because I don't shit where I eat. So <laughs> let's put it that way. And I'm hoping to also uh, get some interviews and stuff with some uh, other vloggers as well, both uh, Navy vets as well as other branches and as well as other types of YouTubers. So that could be a future series coming up, but it all depends on scheduling and school and all that kind of stuff. So that's definitely uh, a thing that I'll have to uh, better iron out in the future. But it is something that I'm gonna be working on here in 2017. Woo. And uh, another type of content I'm gonna be coming out with this year is more Adobe tutorials, more editing tutorials. So I kind of dipped my toe in the water a little bit earlier last year. I did like five Adobe Premiere Pro tutorials, just covering some very basic stuff little basic how-tos like how to make a picture slideshow, how to mute the volumes for the audio tracks, how to import media, all that kind of stuff. And I'm decided to uh, continue doing that because it's very well received by you guys. You guys seem to really like it, you want more. And who am I to deny you, right? So <laughs> we're gonna be moving forward with that. Uh, but keep in mind, they do take a little bit of while to produce because I'm really trying to narrow them down make them as specific as possible so they only answer like one little specific thing about either Premiere or Adobe Audition, which is the audio editing program that Adobe offers. I'm going to be doing tutorials in both. And I'm also going to be doing a beginner's guide for both as well. So we're going to be covering like some very basic stuff like, you know, for Premiere, for example, how to just put together a YouTube video. It's not really that hard, but I know that every day, you know, there's new YouTubers coming around and either they've never touched audio editing software or video editing software or any of that other stuff, or maybe they're just used to like Movie Maker or iMovie or just like the very super duper basic, no frills, no gimmick kind of editing software. And they decide to, you know, move on up with the, uh, the Adobe Premiere Suite and uh, they don't really know anything about it. now. You know, a little background on me, I was using Sony Vegas, Vegas baby, for years and years and years. And it wasn't until probably like 2015, I think, when I moved over to uh, Premiere. Just because I've been hearing a lot of good things about it. Uh, the two big editing programs, it's one of them, along with Final Cut Pro, but I don't run Max because PC for life. Yeah, son. So I don't deal with any of that Mac stuff. I just deal with PC. So my only other option was Premiere. And learning Premiere is actually really good because I think a lot of video editors and stuff in the professional field, they use either Premiere or Final Cut. And the programs are very similar. So even if they use Final Cut, you can still kind of carry over your skills from Premiere 
and put them into Final Cut. It's just some things are laid out a little differently and whatever. So basically the difference is it looks a lot better on your resume if you know how to use Premiere versus Sony Vegas or iMovie or God forbid Movie Maker. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Fucking burn that shit. So that's one of the reasons why I want to do these tutorials just to kind of help you guys get started on your, uh, your YouTube journey and to answer some questions with those. And the beginner's guide, like I said, is going to be covering some very basic stuff geared mostly towards people who don't know wrist lock from a wrist watch, pretty much. <laughs> Say that three times fast. Uh, so I'm just going to be going over like what things do, how to put media into the, uh, the little media library thing so you can drag clips onto the timeline, dragging clips onto the timeline, and how to organize and layer things and all that kind of stuff. We're not going to be getting into anything super groundbreaking, just enough to get you started to make some semblance of a video on the YouTubes. So we'll probably just make like a very basic video, put a little bit of background music into it, and call it a day. So I really look forward to doing that. Now as for the more specific forms of uh, like little editing stuff, it's going to be answering, like I said, very specific questions. It's going to be very short. Um, aiming for around like three to five minutes on average, depending on what we're talking about. Some topics obviously will be a bit longer than others, but three to five minutes on average per one of those videos. And they do take some time to do because <laughs> I have a tendency to ramble and I'm really trying to cut that down as I ramble in this video. <laughs> so uh, it's going to take a lot of time to just kind of edit down and focus. Focus. So just be on the lookout for those coming up in 2017, as well as some new types of content, like maybe something uh, a little more comical. It was just kind of an inspiration because I've been watching a lot of uh, very funny YouTube channels. I know, right? I didn't think those existed. And I just kind of wanted to get on that game myself now. You know, it's going to be a little rocky at first because I've never done that style of YouTube video before, so maybe the timing might be a little off, so just try to be forgiving when I put out some, you know, some of the first types of videos. But hopefully you guys be well receiving to those uh, types of videos. And it's just something a little different. If it catches on, then I'll do more. But if not, at least it's just a nice little experimental thing to kind of help broaden my horizons. Because that's kind of one of the things about my channel is, you know, I don't want to be known for like one thing, you know, I don't want to be the Navy guy or the tutorial guy. I want to, I want to have many facets, many layers, you know, I'm like an onion, except I smell good. <laughs> so there's also that, um, might be doing some Andy K Let's Play stuff, you know, just kind of on and off. It's not really a, uh, a consistent thing because it's all based on games that I have, the time that's needed to play the games, record the games, and do a lot of kind of stuff. I did learn a lot from doing Let's Plays. That's one of the reasons why I really stepped up my game with uh, editing, especially audio editing. That's where I learned a lot of my audio editing techniques was learning how to do Let's Plays. Even though Andy Cade isn't really a super popular series, it really helped me learn a lot. And that's kind of the goal with this upcoming uh, comedy series, which doesn't have a name yet. I don't know if I'm gonna give it a name or not. It's just gonna be a different style of video. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. YouTube wise, I'm really looking forward to it, man. Like, you know, 2016 was kind of a rough year for me because it was my first full year out of the US Navy. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to be when I grow up, you know, hookers and blow. It was very tough for me to readjust to not only civilian life, but American life and college student life after being four deployed FDNF out in the old J-Pans, which I do miss Japan, but I don't miss the FDNF life. No thanks. <laughs> But uh, I do miss uh, the life out there and all that kind of stuff. So that was a bit of a culture shock for me. It took some time to readjust. And I want to thank you guys for being so patient with me as far as uh, dealing with some of my more whiny, depressive periods. Uh, I'm not going to say that there won't be any of that in 2017 because, you know, shit happens. Life happens. But I have a good feeling about this year. I think this year is going to be a lot of good things coming out. And we've had a lot of growth over this short amount of time that I've had this channel up, as far as like it being my main channel. 
I've had the friggin' the Andy San channel since 2008. So this shit's been around for a while. But it was originally my backup channel, and I decided almost a year ago it needs to be my main channel because when I was getting out of the Navy, I realized I was gonna lose a lot of subscribers because I was leaving Japan. I know that there are some of you out there who only subscribe just to watch me do my thing in Japan, and there's a lot of you that subscribe that wanted to see me do my Navy thing, and you know, that's, that's your prerogative. But I just wanted to make a big impact and make a big change and move over to this channel right here, the Andy Sun. And also because I wasn't getting those uh, sweet Navy checks and wasn't getting that sweet Navy coin anymore, I was also looking into other forms of income just to help kind of spread the wealth <laughs> and just allow me to uh, to make a little bit more money so that way I don't have to be as strapped for bills and all that kind of stuff and you know I've been doing YouTube for going on 11 years now so over a decade coming up here in like March <laughs> March 1st will be my 11th year on YouTube I never really thought about monetizing stuff until uh, 2015 when I was getting out of the Navy just because you know I I had a good job with the Navy I wasn't ever really strapped for cash especially not in Japan no <laughs> I saved a lot of money out there so I wasn't really strapped for cash I didn't really feel the need to monetize my videos because there was always you know being an old-school youtuber it's kind of a uh, it was kind of a hard thing to uh, just accept was you know getting money from ads from your videos and being all like yeah check out my patreon do all this other stuff you know it just seemed a little e-baggy and a little a little too greedy and I was very much against it at first I just figured you know what fuck it I'm just gonna do it because I love doing YouTube so I decided to not run ads and monetize anything and all that kind of stuff which really hurt me in the long run I think I could have made a decent amount of money with it but it's not all about the money. It's not about, you know, me being a greedy YouTuber, you know, getting those, getting them shekels, boy. You know, it's just about diversifying my sources of income. Hopefully, if this channel really takes off and I can make some money from it, not only from the channel itself, but from Patreon, which I'm also on Patreon, by the way, guys. So, patreon.com slash theandysan. And I'm gonna be working on, like, reward tiers and stuff like that. I got a couple ideas. Uh, I gotta say, it has been my very much neglected stepchild, the old Patreons. Because again, this whole idea of accepting money or doing something that I love online is just a little, it's, it's weird to me, okay? It's, it's, like, it's like a new pair of pants, you know? You gotta, you gotta break them in, you know? At first it's very uncomfortable and it's very, you know, tight and pinchy and itchy and it smells like old man balls. So it's going to take some time to kind of get used to it. You know, you got, you got to stretch them out. You know, you got, to, you got to just roll around in them. You know, just get the seams just right so it, it fits right. So, yeah, Patreon's going to be something I'm going to be really working on this year as well. Getting some reward tiers, all that kind of stuff. So be on the lookout for that. And if you guys would love to donate, you don't have to. You're by no means obligated to donate or go to my Patreon or whatever, but I would really appreciate it. All that money is going to be going towards uh, getting equipment as well as, you know, paying the bills and stuff like that. Depending on how much I get, it's just going to allow me to do YouTube more. So it doesn't really matter what, to me, it doesn't really matter where the money goes, whether it's getting new equipment or like maybe a, another green screen or something like that, or if it's used to pay bills because to me, the most important currency is time. You know, it doesn't matter where the money goes as long as it, you know, saves me time and gives me more time to do YouTube. Whether that's editing videos, making videos, doing live streams, whatever the case may be. Time is what I'm looking for here. That's the mindset that I have going forward with being more mindful about monetization and how much my videos are making, how much I'm getting off of Patreon, all that kind of stuff. So it's not me being greedy, but I only have so much time that I can allocate towards YouTube. And in order for me to get more time in order to do more of YouTube, I need money to help pay the bills, to keep the lights on, to keep, keep the computer on, 
keep myself fed because even though I look like I don't need any more feeding, if I'm all lethargic and shit, then uh, YouTube videos aren't gonna look so good, are they? If I get more money on YouTube, I can cut back on hours at my part-time job. And my ultimate goal is to just do YouTube, well, part-time. <laughs> I can't go full-time just yet because I'm in college, but if I can get enough money from doing YouTube, you know, either through YouTube itself or Patreon or whatever, if I can make enough money through that, then I can, you know, eventually phase out my part-time job and dedicate those hours that would have been dedicated towards the part-time job and instead dedicate them towards doing more YouTube. And that is the ultimate goal with the whole Patreon, monetization, all that kind of stuff, is to do more YouTube. So, well, there you go. Personal life-wise, uh, doing pretty good in college. Uh, just started up the semester, so uh, obviously I'd be doing good. Uh, got a good feeling about classes this year, pretty easy. Nothing really too brain-bustingly hard, but the whole idea is to get my GPA back up, so that way I can transfer to a university a little bit closer to home and good old oh hi oh or oh h i o i don't know <laughs> i never got into those chants even though i'm from ohio it's fucking weird but yeah i just want to move to a university a bit closer to home so i can be closer to friends and family and not be all up here by my own sum here in old kazu even though i think i've kind of you know grown to like kalamazoo a little bit more it's just I'd rather be close to my friends and family. And you know, just, it's a lot easier for me to visit them if I'm closer to them, obviously. <laughs> you know, it's like an hour and a half drive versus a three and a half hour drive through snow in three states. It's, it's not a good look. So it'd be nice to visit my folks, you know, even if it's just every once in a while, it'd just be easier for me to do that if I was closer to home. Same with my friends. You know, I got a lot of friends in like the Dayton area. So I'd be a lot closer to them so we could catch up and do all this kind of stuff. Because, you know, I miss my friends, dude. <laughs> miss hanging out with them and seeing what they're up to. I mean, yeah, you got the Facebook and all that kind of stuff, but it's not really the same as just hanging out and chilling with your friends, you know. It's not the same. You can't beat that. And then uh, once I'm done with the university, man, you know, just see if I can get a job out in the old J-Pans or maybe look at something in the uh, the LA area <laughs> the LA area you know maybe working at a studio or something like that that'd be cool yeah just my main more realistic goal <laughs> would be to uh, just work out in Japan you know maybe teach English to the kids or work at an Eikaiwa or something like that just to get my foot in the door going back to Japan and just you know live the life man because I loved living out in Japan but I never really liked being in the Navy in Japan because it was very stressful and you know the life of an English teacher is significantly significantly less stressful than uh, being forward deployed in the Navy in Japan being on call all the time so I don't care what any of you Joe Blow English teachers say. It's easier, damn it. So I think that about does it for this rambly ass video. Tell me what you guys would like to see in the future for the old Andy Sand Sam Adishta. Um, maybe any uh, questions you might have about audio editing software, video editing software, any Navy questions you'd like me to answer, any particular Navy YouTubers that you'd like me to interview. Looking at you, JT Suits. What up, fam? Yeah, I can do it. <laughs> so with that said, this is the Andy Sun. Signing up for now. Thinking you guys. Jesus, I think I actually pooped it. Oh fuck. But anyway, I'm thinking you guys for tuning into this uh, this is, uh, update uh, yeah, this update vlog. Uh, it's my last monthly one. I'll still do vlogs from time to time. Maybe a couple updating vlogs from time to time. But it's not going to be like you know every month I'll do one. So it's just going to be kind of a whenever thing, an as-needed thing. So I want to thank you guys for, uh, for sticking around with me almost a year into making this my main channel. We've experienced a lot of growth. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but we got a lot of more people than we did uh, at the beginning of the year. I think we've more than doubled if, uh, if my mathematics is right. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in. For those of you who've been around for the long haul, and those of you just tuning in today, maybe this is your first video of, of mine that you've seen. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> but I just want to thank you guys for sticking around. 
Uh, if you'd like to donate a little a little coin on the old Patreons, uh, patreon.com slash theandysan. Like I said, I'm going to be working on some new tiers and stuff like that, so, you know, that's going to be coming soon. But if you'd like to throw a little coin my way, much appreciated. Not obligated, but appreciated. And I uh, also want to thank you guys for liking with the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party, and hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Hey guys, Andy here, and I just have a quick announcement to make. So, I know some of you have subscribed to my channel strictly for the Tokyo Swan Remastered series of videos that I was putting out a couple months ago, but I had to put those on hold because of some personal issues that was coming up in my own life, as well as with school. You know, I had a lot of exams and big projects and finals and all that kind of stuff uh, just coming up during that time, so I had to put a lot of YouTube projects on hold while I dealt with all that. But now it's a new year and a new semester and I uh, got a little bit of free time to uh, be making some videos. So last night I decided to go on a bit of an editing binge and decided to finish up the rest of the Tokyo Swan Remastered series of videos which includes the original Tokyo Swan series as well as the Unseen Swan series which is uh, seven episodes of like extra clips and stuff that didn't make it to the original series. Got those all finished and uploaded and ready to go. I just gotta, you know, type in the keywords and all that kind of stuff. But I just want to let you guys know ahead of time because I'm gonna be uploading pretty much all the videos, not at once, I learned from, uh, from last time. But I'm gonna be uploading them progressively throughout the day tomorrow because January 26th, 2017 is uh, the seven year anniversary of Roger's passing. And I figured, you know, that would be a good thing to coincide on with the release of the Tokyo Swan series, just as a tribute to his, his life and his legacy on YouTube. For me, Roger was really special because he was one of the, uh, the very first people that got me into doing YouTube. Now I, you know, I'd watch videos and stuff on on YouTube and other various sites back in the day and I didn't really think much of it but when I saw guys like Roger uh, making just very personal videos and showing off cool parts of Japan I just thought it was really cool and he seemed like such an everyman and just like it just seemed so easy to do and it was just like wow I, I want to do this too and so like <laughs> almost 11 years later I'm doing it baby you know that's how long I've been uh, been on the YouTubes. So uh, it's just been a wild and crazy ride, and I couldn't have uh, got started on this ride without a uh, good old Roger Swan. So I figure, in tribute to such a uh, a beloved figure from the early YouTube scene, I wanted to remaster a lot of his old videos. And just basically what I did. For those of you who don't know, I. Uh, rescaled them up to 720p and uh, recolored them so that way because uh, his original videos are very dark looking there wasn't a whole lot of background light and stuff so I basically just lightened it up and did some color correction and stuff like that and uh, it came out pretty good for the most part there were some spots where it was a little mm, but uh, <laughs> keep in mind the footage is nearly 10 years old now so I just did the best I could with what I had and I also cleaned up the audio as well, got rid of a lot of that, um, how can I describe it, the, uh, the early YouTube compression sound, where it sounds like very honky and stuff, so I decided to, you know, curve out a lot of the treble, add some bass, and just kind of help balance things out a little bit. It sounds pretty good, I think. And, uh, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy the uh, Tokyo Swan Remastered series. I'm also going to be putting links to his original videos in every uh, description of the Remastered series, as well as a link to his Memorial Scholarship Fund that was started at Western Michigan University, his alma mater, and my current school as well. Um, it was started to help other kids uh, in their travels, their study abroads, to help them with travel expenses and stuff like that while studying abroad in Japan. And it's been a very su uh, successful scholarship. I think they've sent over like, oh gosh, it has to be like seven kids by now, I think. 
I just wanted to bring a little bit more extra attention to the scholarship. So if you wanted to donate to it, um, I'll put the link in there as well. If you want to learn more about it, you know, you can just look through and stuff like that. So in that way, it helps keep uh, Roger's uh, life and legacy and stuff alive. Yeah, that's about it for me. So with that said, this is the Andy San. Signing up for now. Thinking you guys boop for tuning into this quick update video and uh, also want to thank you guys for liking the thumbs commenting subscribing send a few friends to the party and hey as always we'll see you next time catch you later guys bye all right and we're recording Hey gang, Andy here, and today I've decided to do a little car vlog because it's, uh, it's definitely been a while since I've done one. So I'm uh, just heading back home from school. I'm gonna get some lunch after this, but I just wanted to make a quick little video just to talk to y'all. Now I say quick, but <laughs> no longer than 15 minutes, I promise. I hope. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I just wanted to talk to you guys about some things that's been going on. I guess kind of sort of personal life as well as YouTube-y stuff. The main thing I want to talk to you guys today about is my recent stint as a video editor. I've been busy editing some of my friends' videos and podcasts, and it's been really fun for me. I'm just kind of looking at uh, making it just as my part-time source of income while I'm in while I'm in college. So I can't quite go full-time yet, but uh, I think at least making it part-time seems to be a pretty reasonable goal. And I know some of my friends actually do that. Some of them out in Japan, they. Uh, they edit videos out there. Uh, I've been helping some of my friends out with videos and things like that. And while they're not quite able to pay me yet, uh, they are getting you know some more money through ad revenue and they're getting more money on Patreon. So that's definitely going to be a possibility very soon. Um, if I can make at least 80 bucks a day for three days a week, then I can uh, quit my job. So I can do uh, the video editing and stuff, well, not full-time, but part-time. <laughs> and that way I can uh, do something I love to do and also still pay the bills and, you know, get some more time uh, working on homework and stuff like that. So that way I don't have to come home being all sweaty and greasy and smelling a berg and uh, try to get a quiz out. So <laughs> uh, it's happened to me a lot doing stuff like that. So uh, that's the goal with uh, making video editing my uh, my part-time job. And it just turned green. Oh man. <laughs> Can't even go because there's people ahead of me. Anyway, so, and I kind of see, you know, video editing as more of kind of my way of making it big on YouTube, quote unquote. Because a lot of people, when they do stuff on YouTube, they kind of have this dream of, oh yeah, I'm gonna make a lot of videos and do cool stuff. Once I hit a million subscribers, then I'll be able to quit my job and do it full time. Well, you know, in this day and age, you could actually do it a lot sooner than that. But I'd say uh, probably at least, you know, 100,000 is probably the good threshold to be able to do stuff full-time depending on your financial situation of course you know maybe you live in a bigger house and you got family kids all that kind of stuff so you may have to wait a little bit longer but you know for single peeps like myself I'd say 100k is probably a good starting point for at least being able to quit your job and uh, make it on YouTube but again you gotta look at the finances the AdSense patreon wherever you're getting your money. So, depending on how you're setting that up, you may be able to do it either sooner or later. So, anyway, it all depends on your situation. So, where do I come in in this? Well, the thing is, with YouTube, the way it's changing its algorithm and stuff like that, a lot of people are being hurt by it, but it's also creating new opportunities for uh, other people. So, like when most people think of making it big on YouTube or making a living off of YouTube, they think of, you know, just doing their own videos, just making a bunch of videos, putting them out there, and then waiting for the subs to roll in and subsequently the money to roll in from the ad revenue as well. And then that's how they do it. That's the traditional way of making money off of YouTube. Now, what I'm looking for is something a little off the, uh, the well-beaten path. So I see a lot of these algorithm changes as opportunities for me to 
utilize my skills in helping other YouTubers get big. So what I mean is um, I've been doing YouTube videos for going on 11 years now. Uh, March 1st of this year, 2017, will be my 11 year anniversary on YouTube. So I've been around for a while and uh, I've been honing my skills and getting better and better every day with video editing and stuff. And uh, I think now I feel confident in offering my services to other YouTubers to help them uh, lighten the load a little bit with their editing. Now, originally when I thought of what a professional video editor is or what qualifications they should have, um, the reason I didn't pursue this sooner is because I figured that for a professional video editor, uh, you need to know like all the cool whiz bang edits and know how to do like super awesome, you know, studio grade, you know, stuff you see in movies, sort of special effects and things like that. And you have to like know all the things pretty much in order to uh, even entertain the idea of being a professional video editor. And, you know, there's obviously the traditional way of going up through the ranks in, uh, in Hollywood. So becoming a production assistant and then becoming like an assistant editor, then editor, and then later moving up into more of a producer sort of role and just doing it that way. And that's, that's definitely a possibility for me too. I'm not ruling that out entirely. In fact, I would absolutely love to do something like that from the, uh, from the TV side of the house. That would be awesome. But uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's get a little more a little bit more realistic here. So I'm not saying it can't happen, but uh, I got to kind of set myself up to uh, get myself there. So the first step is becoming a YouTube editor. So the awesome thing about YouTube is I don't have to be at a specific location. Like most of my clientele is actually in Japan. So they send me the video files through like Google Drive or Dropbox or whatever. You know, they go to sleep and I'm getting up and after classes and stuff like that, I come home and I edit videos. So while they're busy sleeping, I'm busy editing the videos. So geographic dispersity actually works in our favor. So that way while I'm sleeping, they're making videos and while they're sleeping, I'm editing their videos. So it all just kind of works out. But that's not to say I wouldn't help out American YouTubers either. I'm just saying in that particular instance, it works. And, uh, like I said, the beauty of YouTube is that you don't have to be in a certain geographic location to do things. So I could do the same exact thing for YouTubers in, you know, Kalamazoo. I could do the same thing for YouTubers in Ohio, California, New York, Texas, all around the world and the country. So, um, as long as they can upload the videos to to like a Dropbox or a Google Drive or whatever the case may be, then I can get to work on them. So as long as you know we're able to maintain some sense of direction as far as like what they want me to do with editing the videos, and that, that falls onto communication between editor and creator. So that's something I've been really working on as well, even just between you know my friends and I, learning how to work with clients, how to basically get what they want onto video, you know, maybe make some suggestions here and there. Uh, if they like it, you know, put it into effect. If not, then whatever. But it's all catering to what they want. You know, the customer comes first, you know, that sort of mentality. And it's definitely a different type of workflow. And I think, you know, with YouTubers, especially the ones I've been doing it a while, um, having somebody else edit their videos is a very, new experience for them. Sorry, there's <laughs> a lady in front that's walking very slowly through the crosswalk. But anyway, um, having somebody else edit their videos is a very new experience for them. So they're not used to telling people how to edit things or how to communicate it properly. So um, it's by no means a very smooth process, but I think uh, kind of once I get you know, the general gist of it down. And once, you know, we develop a rapport and I see like some of their earlier videos, I can get kind of a feel of what they want out of a YouTube video. And once we get into a format and get a template and all that kind of stuff set up, then it's really easy. You just go in, you cut the little bitty bits out, 
slap on the color correction filter and doll up the audio and you're good to go. But just because it's easy doesn't mean that, you know, they shouldn't hire me. So the thing is, uh, and like I was saying earlier with the, with the algorithm with YouTube, uh, the YouTube algorithm has changed in such a way that a lot of people simply can't keep up with the demand for constant content all the time on YouTube because this whole era of the one-man show on YouTube, I believe, is, uh, is coming to an end because, you know, especially for the ones that want to take it seriously and, you know, make a living off of it. Now, if you're just doing it for fun, then whatever, do your thing, you know, got less. But for those of you who want to make a career out of it, or at least not work a full-time job while doing YouTube, then I think hiring staff is the way to go because it helps alleviate that pressure from you. It allows you to work more on your content or your branding or just simply hanging out with your family. You know, do whatever you want to do. It just frees up time for other YouTubers to do other things. So it allows them to be much more effective and it gives me a well-paying job. So, you know, we all win. And I think this isn't just limited to the big YouTubers because, I mean, a lot of the big YouTubers already have editors and stuff like that. They can hire, you know, in-house staff to do their videos. I think uh, the Game Grumps are a good example of that. Like, they've had, you know, when they first started out, um, well, originally, JonTron was the editor, but then he taught his, uh, his roommate, Barry, how to edit in, I think they were using Premiere at the time. So yeah, he, used, he taught him how to edit in Premiere and you know, he became the editor and then so on and so forth. But they've basically had like some sort of editing staff for them since essentially the beginning. <laughs> and so it's not by any means a new idea to become a YouTube editor and to offer one's services for editing YouTube videos, but it's, it's beginning to change from you know, only the cream of the crop of YouTube of YouTubers can afford editors. And I think it's gonna become much more commonplace for channels of, well, we'll say like 10K, 20K, and upwards, what? Anyway, <laughs> to, uh, to hire, uh, hire editors, just to be able to keep up with the output of videos that the YouTube algorithm is demanding of its creators. And I kind of got the inspiration for this idea from a game theory video that MatPat put out talking about what's the problem with YouTube. And he pointed that out in that the YouTubers that are winning out of this are the ones that have like a full-time staff, like BuzzFeed and NewsFed, or SourceFed rather, sorry. Um, and stuff like that, videos that have a constant output of content, that have a full-time staff that can shoulder the load, help take some weight off of the main creators, that way they can create, and then they can edit and put out the stuff and do PR and whatever else they do. So that way they can be more effective as a unit. So I see that as the future of YouTube opportunities rather than just you can only be a YouTube creator and you have to have like a million subscribers in order to even entertain the idea of doing it full time. You know, I think those days have long since passed and I think it's time to think a little outside the box as far as what it means to do YouTube full time. So. Uh, let's see, where are we at here? Like 14 and a half minutes? See, I told you. It's gonna be around 15-ish minutes, probably a little less once I get around to uh, cutting this thing up. But in the interest of keeping it short, short, <laughs> I'll just sign off here. So yeah, this is the Andy Sound. Sign up for now, and as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. And today I just wanted to give you guys a quick little update. And uh, if you couldn't tell by my shitty ass voice, uh, I'm a little under the weather right now. So I really didn't want to make a video, but uh, I've been getting a lot of comments and stuff asking, you know, what's going on in my personal life since I haven't made a, uh, a vlog talking about my life in a while. So I figured I'd just give you guys a little update and give myself a little video to edit in the morning before I go to work. 
right now, like I said, under the weather. So yeah, I didn't want to sit down and do like life after Navy or any videos or stuff like that, aside from this update until the voice gets better. We should be in a couple days, you know, hopefully. <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to check in and let you all know what's going on. So I uh, caught the bug that's going around. So I'm just uh, taking care of myself, making sure I get proper rest. Um, it was actually so bad. I had to leave work early today because of it because I thought it was either gonna either pass out or throw up or throw up and pass out in my own throw up or fucking something I don't know I just uh, I really shouldn't have gone into work but I felt good when I first came in but it just started progressing and I, I just had to leave early that day you know just resting some more taking care of myself as best I can while I'm sick you know taking some good old vitamin C, things like that, and uh, some decongestant, which I hope kicks in soon. Anyway, yeah, um, aside from that, um, I've been doing some apartment hunting because uh, my lease at my current place is gonna be up next month, and I know <laughs> I probably should have looked earlier, but uh, with all the stuff with school and, and all that, it kind of put that on hold for a while, and plus I didn't really know like where to go to, or even if I wanted to leave, because, uh, you know, originally I just wanted to stay here, and I was in talks with the uh, with the, the apartment manager to just re-up my lease to, uh, to another apartment within the complex that would have been the same amount if I would have stayed in my current place, but uh, I was just looking over my budget, man, and it's just, you know, especially after these uh, past couple months because you know as you guys know uh, I've probably talked about this at some point but uh, the GI Bill is prorated for the days that school is in session and it's also prorated for the month previous so for January and February it's prorated for uh, December and January and winter break falls on those months so I've been taking a massive pay cut from uh, from uh, those months and it's not like I can pick up extra hours and stuff at work. I mean, I could, but that would take away from time that I could be using to study for quizzes, midterms, doing homework, all that kind of stuff. So it's a very delicate balance. And I think that you know I'm working the maximum amount of hours that I should be uh, during school now. You know, we're going to be leading into spring break here, so I'm going to try to pick up a couple extra hours. But uh, on <laughs> on normal weeks where there are no holidays or anything like that, um, you know, I just I've met a pretty good balance of work life school as far as hours and things like that. So it's, it's really difficult to uh, to do stuff like that. So anyway, long story short, I was a broke ass kid for the past two months. It just made it very apparent that uh, I really can't afford this place anymore, you know? And even working full time at McDonald's, I could barely afford it. And they want more money for rent. And it's just, it's gotten to the point where, you know, I just can't do it anymore. And I also want to, at some point, take uh, take at least one summer off so I can, you know, work and, you know, just basically decompress after, after a, a long school year. Maybe focus on some other things, focus more on YouTube, stuff like that during the summer, get some projects and stuff going. But uh, with the apartment costing as much as it is, you know, I can't find a job that will allow me to afford to stay here. So the fact of the matter is I have to find uh, some other place to live. So. I've been looking around at some places and uh, putting in my applications and stuff. You know, I got one place already lined up that I'm pretty sure is a shoe in That's almost like 200 bucks less a month than what I'm paying here. And it's actually uh, a slightly bigger apartment too. I think it's like 60 more square feet, something like that. I have to look at it again, but I think it's around either 60 or 70 more square feet than here. I did take a tour of it. The appliances aren't quite as new or as nice as the ones I have here. You know, the general layout's pretty good. The bedroom is nice and big. So I'm thinking uh, maybe just moving my recording and all that kind of stuff in there. You know, get the, 
the uh, the studio uh, acoustic like foam stuff to help uh, block out the sound and whatnot. I haven't really tested to see how acoustically sound it is. I mean, obviously, I was just walking in some other guy's apartment, basically, just looking looking uh, at the setup of everything. So, uh, but the, I mean, that's <clears throat> again TBD to be determined. You know, card subject to change. But uh, I have a good feeling about the place. Uh, just right now, I gotta focus on saving up money. You know, getting more money from doing other little side jobs and stuff. Um, and one of the things that's been really, um, really a blessing for me is uh, getting work for uh, being a YouTube editor. So I'm actually getting paid to uh, edit videos and stuff like that. And that's what I've been working on a lot lately is uh, getting videos and stuff out there for other people. So like when people say, Andy, you haven't made a video in a while. Well, that's not true. <laughs> I just haven't made them for myself in a while. But uh, it has been a very rewarding experience, you know, not just financially, but also spiritually, I guess. I don't know. It just, it feels right to do, to help out other people with their... Uh, their YouTube goals and, you know, getting paid for it just kind of helps, you know, bring things full circle of the whole, like, yeah, I can do this. And so my goal is to eventually make editing videos like my part-time job to where I don't have to work um, elsewhere and I can just focus on making videos and, uh, <coughs> excuse me. So I can focus on editing videos and then focus more on school and things like that. And then hopefully if things go good, maybe I could take like a summer off or something like that. And then uh, focus a bit more on making more videos and things like that. So, but again, we'll just have to see what happens. But right now things are going pretty good. Getting my name out there. Hopefully I can pick up some big projects in the, uh, in the future but right now I'm just kind of grinding on you know other people's stuff and then making my own stuff when I can and uh, yeah so <laughs> it's just gonna be a just a combination of you know getting paid for helping other people make their videos and stuff like that as well as you know AdSense from my own videos and you know patreon once i start to reformat it <laughs> it has been my neglected stepchild i think but uh things are going pretty okay for me uh still pretty rocky right now still pretty like i said to be determined as far as a lot of things go as far as like you know where i'm gonna live and you know, what's going on with my jobs and school and all this other stuff. So it's very much, you know, very much in flux right now. So um, that's why I didn't want to make a vlog about it. But I know some of you guys are kind of concerned, wondering what's going on. So I figured I'd at least check in and let you know. But anyway, I'm pretty sure you've all clicked away at this point. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I just want to thank you guys for tuning in to this uh, sickly ass uh, it, uh, vlog update, Madubop. And uh, if you'll excuse me, I gotta get some sleep. I am fucking just oof, sick and tired. <laughs> so, with that said, this is the Andy Son. Sign off for now. Thanking you guys, Pook, for tuning into this sick ass update and uh for watching my other stuff and as always we'll see you next time catch you there guys bye all right and we're recording hey gang andy here and today i have a major announcement to make but before i get into that i just want to say that this is a vlog a vlog that i do of talking about personal life stuff but if you're not interested in the um unscripted unorganized, unstructured, sort of stream of consciousness type videos that I tend to do for these vlogs, this ain't the video for you. So I'm just giving you that little warning right now so everybody, you know, can click away. But for those of you who do enjoy my personal life stuff, and there are a lot of you, thanks for staying. So we'll get into this major personal life news. So 
I'm gonna be moving soon. Um, just got approval for my new apartment. Uh, it's gonna be a lot smaller than my current place, about 100 square feet smaller, so that's gonna kinda suck. But uh, it is almost $200 cheaper a month, and it's in a nice neighborhood. The apartment looks really nice. So I can't wait to move. And this move, like I said, is going to be mostly for financial reasons because Quite frankly, I can't afford this place anymore. It's no, it's not a lavish fucking palace. It's just a one bedroom apartment, you know? Nothing really all that to it, you know? <laughs> As you're gonna say. Like I said, I'm gonna be moving uh, next month. So I got a whole lot of stuff that I gotta take care of. I gotta get movers and all that kind of stuff lined up. Gotta get packing and stuff like that. I was just waiting for the approval before I really did anything. But I wanted to let you guys know because I just found out about it today. So, and I wanted to kind of give give the old webcam a break because I know some of y'all aren't really too fond of me doing the whole webcam thing because I'm just sitting there and like my double chin sticking out and like, how can anybody take a fat person seriously? I mean, <coughs> oh, I think it threw up a little. Eh. But yeah, so I just wanted to do a little something different on the on the cellular telephone and uh, just talk to y'all about the fact that I'm moving to a new place. Um, it is gonna be just slightly further away from school and work, but that's okay, it's not unreasonably far. Just a skush, a skush farther. And uh, this is gonna be a lot smaller of a place, so I am gonna have to kind of move some things around and might end up selling some things or just getting rid of shit, I don't know. We'll kind of cross that bridge when we get to it. Uh, but I just want to tell you guys the good news while I'm just walking around being all out of breath from talking so loud because I know some of y'all don't like it when I'm just kind of very quietly talking and just kind of talking in this very normal voice. So I just wanted to be a little more animated because fuck the neighbors. I'm gonna do what I want, bitch. Ah. But yeah, also I'm gonna be putting out my uh, long overdue 11 year anniversary video on YouTube. I'm just getting the cameras charged up now. I don't have to go to class for a couple hours, so I figure in the meantime, why not work on a video? <laughs> why not work on two? Fuck it. Feeling pretty damn good. I think I can work on two videos, you know? And speaking of videos, um, I know some of you guys are kind of a little ho-hum about the fact that I'm not really putting out a lot of my own stuff lately. And that's just mostly because of school, work, as well as these YouTube editing gigs that I've been getting a lot of, so thank y'all for uh, for employing my poor self and uh, helping me uh, with moving expenses and whatnot and just helping keeping me well fed. <laughs> so I just want to thank y'all for doing that. I do want to make more videos and stuff, but again, I can only do so much with the time that I'm given. So I can only put out as much as I can. So I do want to thank you guys for being so supportive of all that. Hopefully we'll get some new content out there soon. I got a couple stuff in the, uh, in the backlog that I want to get out. Uh, stuff that I recorded when I had a little more hair on top. So it's pretty obvious that it was recorded several months ago. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. And uh, also, like I said, gonna be putting out my 11 year anniversary video on the YouTubes. I'm just charging the cameras right now. It's gonna be kind of a, uh, an evolution of my recording setup. Um, it's not gonna include webcams or cell phones because, well, you see enough of my, uh, my voluptuous face on the webcams as it is, so I figure I'd kind of give you, give you a little break from that for a while. And also because some of my cell phones are either missing or the batteries don't work or the cell phone itself doesn't work, so whatever. So we'll just stick with the standard cameras and uh, just gotta go from there. So, with that second cup of coffee drink, this is the Andy Son, signing off for now. Thinking you guys, Poop, for tuning into this video and for watching my other stuff. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey gang, Andy here. I just wanted to give you guys an update on what's been going on with me lately, uh, both personal life-wise as well as YouTube life-wise. So as you can see in the back, working on uh, some youtube -y stuff. Uh, that's just the audio from a video for uh, one of my buddies uh, that I've been working with in editing videos and stuff. He's been my, my main client, <laughs> we'll put it that way. And uh, it's been a lot of fun, man, like working on uh, other people's videos. 
Um, you know, I've been doing YouTube for over 11 years now, as of March 1st, 2017. Ooh. Been doing YouTube for 11 years, and it's really hard to believe that I've been on the platform that long, and that the platform itself has been around, you know, that long. Well, a little longer, but, you know, for the most part, at least 11 years, Jesus Christ. Ooh. But, uh, yeah, man, uh, like I said, Get a lot of satisfaction from it. I also get paid from it too, so that's nice. And my goal is to basically, you know, be able to make a living off of editing videos. And I'm slowly getting myself to that goal. So I guess the idea and just kind of the progression of all that is to uh, take on more gigs. And then as I'm able to get more gigs on a consistent basis, then I'll be able to phase out my current part-time job, which isn't exactly the most glamorous of jobs and is definitely not editing videos. So <laughs> I'll let you fill in the blanks there. But uh, once we get to be able to uh, uh, replace the income from my part-time job by editing videos and then eventually uh, surpass that income, then uh, we'll be on our way, man. And I'll be able to uh, just live a little less broke most of the time So yeah, and that's what I've been working on the most uh, YouTube wise as far as like my own stuff goes uh, I've pretty much put that on hiatus for a while um, I'll probably like make a couple videos here and there between now and then but uh, especially leading into April Which is the last month for uh, spring semester? Which is usually when a lot of professors put out like their big projects and you know, it's the last chance to turn in all the assignments and stuff like that. And it's just gonna be uh, ramping up a lot school-wise. So I'm gonna have a lot less time to focus on YouTube for both myself as well as clientele. But I do have to put clientele ahead of myself. So it's basically a escuela, clientele, me. <laughs> as far as priorities go. YouTube and stuff like that so uh, if I do get any free time between now and then it's gonna be devoted towards making videos for my clients as opposed to myself but that's you know, not to say I'll put I won't be able to put out a video or two every once in a while you know but I just wanted to give you guys a heads up if you guys were expecting like constant up-to-date stuff on my personal life and YouTube videos and tutorials and life after Navy stuff and things like that uh, but hopefully once I get to the new place, which, uh, speaking of which, segue. <laughs> so once I get to the uh, the new place, which will be starting uh, next week is when I sign the lease. Uh, this week I just turned in uh, part of my security deposit in order to uh, reserve the apartment. And then next week is when I actually sign the paperwork to uh, start moving in. So I'm going to try to move as much stuff as I can by myself. But I do know I'm gonna need some help moving a lot of the big stuff. Like uh, the things I'm looking at most are the couch and the bed. I know I'm definitely gonna need some help in that department because you know it doesn't matter how <laughs> how strong you are, you definitely do need some help. You know, at least with one other person moving a lot of those big items. So there you go. And uh, yeah, once I uh, get the lease all signed in, I'll start moving in stuff slowly but surely. And uh, hopefully I'll be all moved in uh, at the end of the following week. So that's what's gonna be going on for me in the next couple weeks. And then as far as like doing like a moving vlog goes, I'm totally down for that. Uh, it's not gonna be like a, you know, post a one minute video every day to show the progression of moving. It's gonna be, Probably similar to my Andy Japandi moving video where I show you guys what the apartment looks like before I start packing or any of that other stuff and then slowly show the progression of, okay, you know, here are the boxes, here's what I moved today and, you know, you'll just begin to slowly see the apartment get more and more bare and then uh, I might even show, like, what the new apartment looks like uh, as I'm moving all the, uh, stuff from this apartment to that one so yeah, it'll just be a different little cut up and uh i can't wait to uh to get moving man uh this new place is gonna be a lot smaller than my current place 
Not to say my current place is fucking huge or anything, but uh, it's gonna be a lot smaller, but the rent's gonna be a lot cheaper too, so that's gonna be uh, really good on the, uh, the wallet. So I'll be able to save expenses, and uh, my plan is to hopefully, not this year, but maybe next year, uh, take a summer semester off, so that way I can focus more on uh, YouTube videos for my clientele, and just basically taking a break from school, because I've been fucking hitting it hard since uh, the beginning of 2016. Like, I haven't taken much of a break since then, aside from, aside from winter break. Um, even during the summer, when I was out for that brief period of time, um, I was just working all the time. You know, full time. I had to do it in order to be able to afford this place. So hopefully with lower expenses, I'll be able to afford to take a break, at least for a couple months. Um, uh, but the, the whole idea of me even being out here in Kalamazoo is to graduate. So uh, I don't want to take a break for too long. <laughs> Got to get back to the grindstone at some point. But it is nice to be able to take a break when you can. Uh, just refocus, maybe visit some friends and family, do some stuff, you know, once I get my finances under control. Because right now, right now it's a shoestring budget, man. I'll be totally fucking honest with you. It's it's not looking good financial-wise, which is one of the reasons why I'm moving. So hopefully that, in addition to a bunch of other cost-cutting measures and bringing in new income through uh, editing YouTuber videos, I'll be able to uh, turn the tide as far as that goes. And... Uh, who knows? We'll, we'll see where it goes from there. But yeah, that's just uh, what's going to be going on for the next couple weeks. Um, hope to give you guys more updates when I can. But I just wanted to put this out there so that way you guys know what's going on. So if I don't give you guys an update for a while, you know, that's why. <laughs> so with that said, guys, this is the Andy Son. Signing out for now. Thanking you for tuning into this video and for watching my other stuff. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, and welcome to my new studio. I'm just going to give you guys a quick little video, as quick as I can anyway, about some life updates that have been going on with me lately. And the most important one is, well, I've moved. So uh, this past week, I moved out of my old apartment into this new apartment, new neighborhood, new, 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 new recording setup, everything. It's been very exhausting you know, getting everything all moved over here from the old place and then trying to figure out how I want things set up. It's been a little bit of a trial and error, so I've been very busy. That's why I haven't been making videos lately. If you've been following me on Instagram, instagram.com slash theandysan, I put up little video clips of the progression of my move from the old apartment to this one. And I'm also gonna be putting out a like fully fledged moving vlog as well later on. But I just gotta get like all the video footage put together and it's a lot. Recorded it on my GoPro and my trusty Zoom H2N mic that I'm using right now. And right now I'm just trying out some different recording uh, setups. So this is just one of them. This isn't like the finalized version, whatever that means. <laughs> Think about maybe doing like a, like a multi-camera setup for video. So I'll have one on, on top of the monitor here and then keep one right there. So I have a little camera one, camera two, camera one, camera two. <laughs> have that going on, but it's all a little TBD to be right, to be honest with you right now. Ugh, it's kind of late too. So anyway, guys, um, I'm really loving the new apartments. Uh, the neighborhood Neighborhood is mm, eclectic, we'll say. But I do like the new apartment. It's nice, it's clean. I have windows. If I record stuff during the day, I get all this nice daylight coming in. And I have my LED lamp right now because there is no daylight right now. You, ju you just don't realize like the little things like natural lighting and big windows, not little tiny basement windows because I really did did feel trapped in that old apartment uh, just 
having the little tiny windows, being underground, because it was one of those garden level apartments, and now being above ground has been such a boost to my mood. And in addition to the slightly nicer weather, uh, Michigan wise anyway, <laughs> you know how it is, like one minute it's like super duper nice here, and you know the next minute after you get done changing, you know it's all cloudy and there's two feet of snow on the ground, and it's like, what happened? <laughs> But it's been pretty nice here lately. I can't complain too much. Now, as far as like a recording setup goes, like I said, this is kind of a kind of a little tryout thing. Uh, I might put up like a little background or something just to kind of get something visually appealing in the background because I know that the backgrounds for my videos have been very lacking as of forever. <laughs> <laughs> and I really want to do something to improve that with the new place. And one of the things I'm thinking about is uh, maybe getting like a green screen for here, here, the back part here, and uh, just being able to change backgrounds and stuff on the fly. You know, it's kind of the, the cheap way to do it. Uh, another way of doing it is maybe getting like some wall scrolls, posters, uh, maybe printing out some of my pictures from Instagram, getting those taken care of. Um, there are some services out there that I was thinking about getting like actual painted versions of some of my uh, some of my top Instagram photos so that's definitely a possibility obviously a little bit further out because I have more financially uh, pressing matters to attend to than my background background stuff for my YouTube videos uh, but once I get that all taken care of that's definitely going to be uh, something coming up here and maybe just adding a little bit every week or so uh, in summation um, I moved that's why I didn't make uh, videos for the past week. The new place is great. It is a little bit further away from the grocery stores and fast food places, which is good for the, uh, the old neck fupa because, you know, I think that's one of the reasons why I ate so much fast food was because it was just there. At the old place, it was, you know, right on the big road that had a whole bunch of fast food restaurants. So it was very easy for me to say, hey, I'm kind of hungry. Let's get some Taco Bell. And it was like, no big deal. But here I kind of have to drive out a little bit, little ways to just get to a McDonald's. So if anything, that's kind of like demotivation for me to stay away from the fast food stuff. Now, as far as exercising goes, well, we're, you know, one, th one thing at a time here, guys. But with the nicer weather, that may be a possibility in the, uh, the very near future. But right now I have to work on school. That's going to be the main priority for this month. So don't expect a whole lot of videos from me this month. Uh, I may put out like one or two videos a week, maybe, but at least one. That, that's my goal, to get at least one video out a week. But don't expect like <laughs> a lot of videos all the time from me this month because I'm going to be focusing on, you know, getting the last bit of assignments out, uh, studying for finals, doing finals, in addition to work and uh, my freelancing gigs. So I'm going to be quite the busy beaver this month. Once that's all taken care of, I uh, hope to get you guys out some, uh, some fresh, some fresh, spicy new content. And uh, I can't wait, man. Got a lot of ideas and uh, can't wait to get them out to you and uh, stuff like that. So before I go on another 10 minutes of just rambling on about stuff, I better sign off and give myself some shut eye. So with that said, guys, this is the Andy Son. Sign up for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, Yang Andy here, and today is a very special day. Yes, because, as it says here on the whiteboard, I got my first YouTube check today. This is basically just a culmination of everything that I've been working towards since I first started YouTube back in March of 2006. And I know some of y'all might, might be thinking, well, Andy, if you've been doing YouTube since March of 06, why the fuck are you now getting your own check? Well, the simple answer to that is my original channel had some difficulties with the AdSense account that was attached to it. So I wasn't able to monetize any of my videos on that original channel. It kind of became this problem of, well, I'll just do it because I love YouTube and I love connecting with people and I don't need those stinking ads. You know, I still want to do it because I love it. But over time, you know, getting money from uh, ad monetization became more of an accepted thing and less of a, oh, they're just selling out, you know, buy the t-shirt. <laughs>
you know, it became more of an accepted thing, and, and in a lot of people's cases, a necessary thing because of just the shifting economy and the uh, unknown of job security, at least in America, maybe different elsewhere in the world, but in America, it was definitely the case. When I was getting out of the Navy, I had to make a very big choice in addition to obviously getting out of the Navy <laughs> being a major choice, but I also had to make another choice on YouTube, which was, do I continue staying on this channel and just doing it for the love of YouTube? Or do I move over to a new channel to start a new beginning and to begin, you know, forming these sources of income to where I don't have to worry about, well, am I gonna get paid enough this month? Am I gonna be able to find a job? Getting money from YouTube, you know, long term will help kind of alleviate these problems. And that's something I really had to take seriously into consideration because I would begun to build up a fan base on my original channel. And so the more subscribers and stuff I got on the original channel, the more I was very unsure about, do I really want to start a new channel or move to one of my other channels? It just became <laughs> this, this constant fight with myself over this. But I decided on the 10 year anniversary of my original channel to move everything over to this channel right now that you're watching. And it's just been great ever since. And I'm so happy I made the move. Um, even though it did mean losing a lot of subscribers, um, I did gain a lot more subscribers as far as like active ones because, you know, I've been doing YouTube for a long ass time, so I don't know how many of those people are even around anymore watching videos, much less my own. Starting over has definitely been a good thing for me. You know, I've had my archives and stuff, so if you're interested in watching the old stuff, you can. It was also a good chance for me to hit the reset button because I was making a lot of a lot of choices in my life. I was getting out of the Navy. I was coming back to America. I was coming back to America as a civilian and I was coming back to America to go back to college. So a lot of change was happening in my life at that time. And I wanted a new channel to reflect a new slate. I didn't want to be pigeonholed as the Navy guy or the Japan guy or whatever. I just wanted to kind of wipe the slate clean and say, this is me now. And, you know, over the months, I started getting some money on YouTube, you know, maybe a couple bucks here, a couple bucks there. And it just started growing and growing. And now today, a little over a year later since switching to that channel, I finally got my first YouTube check. And like I said, it's not exactly life-changing money in the fact that, oh my God, I'll never have to work a day in my life again. But it's more of just an affirmation that, you know what? all this hard work, all this dedication, all those hours spent when you could have been sleeping or studying or doing something else with your life. You decided to dedicate that towards YouTube and connect with other people. And that to me is the essence of YouTube, is the ability to connect with other people all around the world. Getting a little bit of money, you know, may sound greedy, like, oh, he finally got them shekels, boy but it's, it shows me that what I'm doing is a step in the right direction. And if I continue to go down this route, I'll be able to make more money. And then I'll be able to, once I build up enough money, I can shift my focus from doing stuff I really don't like doing for money just so I can pay the bills. And I can focus more on this other thing that I like called YouTube. It took me so many years, so many hours to get to this point, to make this video, to tell you that I'm on the right path. A lot of people didn't really believe me. They would tell me stuff like, Andy, your videos are too boring. Andy, why are you looking like that? Why aren't you talking about something more interesting? Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? Or, you know, especially in the beginning of doing YouTube, it was like, why the fuck, what, what's a YouTube? I don't even know. Like, why are you holding that camera in front of yourself? What, why are you talking to yourself? They didn't see the value in what I was doing. And, you know, this is a message for those of you who may be starting out on YouTube or may not have a very big following, you know. It will come if you 
at least believe in yourself. When everybody else doesn't believe you and thinks that you're nuts for doing this and you should be focusing on something else, at least if you believe in yourself, it'll give you the drive to continue to make more videos and to connect with more people and to spread your message across the internet and into other people's lives who you wouldn't have known had you not done this. And I've talked about meeting up with people who've watched my videos before, one of the most memorable experiences, and he may not even know it. I was still stationed out in Yokosuka and I was leaving base that day, and it was a very rough day. Just a really shitty day. Uh, my LPO, which is my boss, basically, um, my manager for civilians out there, um, he was really giving me a rough time, and I just wanted to go home. I just wanted to get something to eat, get something to drink, you know, like drink, and just forget about that day. And I was just in a very bad mood, and as I was getting close to the gates, a third class, who was an E4, uh, stopped and he's like, hey, aren't you that guy that does the YouTube videos? And I'm like, yeah. And keep in mind, I was still in uniform at the time, so it wasn't like I was in civilian clothes. And he's like, oh, okay, yeah. I was in uniform at the time. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, oh my God, dude, I watched your videos, my wife and I did, and because of you, I joined the Navy and I made it all the way out to Japan. And I just want to say that what you're doing is definitely a good thing. You're helping to give other people hope and to give them confidence in themselves to say that, you know what, it's going to be okay. It didn't really sink in at that moment, just the effect that that had on him as well as myself. And I know like for some people it may be no big deal, but to me it definitely was. The fact that little old me from nowhere Ohio managed to affect somebody else's life from somewhere across the world. While I was stationed thousands of miles away from where I originally came from, I managed to run across that person and they told me how I had managed to change their lives and they were able to meet me because of those changes. And it's just such a, a weird serendipitous sort of thing to think about, you know? And I'm sure some other big YouTubers may feel the same way, or maybe that experience is kind of dulled because they have so many people saying something similar to them. You know, I take a lot of those things to heart. You know, it gives me motivation more than simply money. It gives me the drive to, no matter how bad my day is, no matter how many things have gone wrong, at least there's one thing one thing in my life that's going right. And I can just sit here and edit for hours, knowing that somebody somewhere will see what I can do. Before I end this video here, it's probably pretty long, but I just wanted to make a quick announcement and then we'll uh, move on from here. Um, I've been doing a lot of thinking of making a second channel dedicated towards um, learning how to do YouTube whether it's from a technical perspective or from a uh, just kind of a youtube -y perspective, like how do I YouTube? You know, not just editing videos and audio and stuff like that, but just how does YouTube work and how can I optimize my YouTube channel to be the best that it can be? And I was a little leery at first about making a second channel because that meant taking more time away from this main channel. But since receiving this check, it's also kind of a little kick in the ass and saying that, you know what, you should probably take this YouTube thing a little bit more seriously and not half-ass it as much. So I've decided to pursue making a second channel dedicated towards not only Adobe tutorials, whether that's with Premiere Pro, Adobe Audition, maybe a little bit of Photoshop here and there. I'm not a Photoshop whiz, but I do know my way around the, uh, the brushes, <laughs> so. We can get that going at least. And uh, just basic YouTube 101 sort of things. And uh, I don't have a channel name for it yet. I don't have it set up so I can't link it to you right now because I just decided this like right now, <laughs> literally. Once we get things up and running, once I get a couple videos on the channel and get some good graphics and things like that, then I'll be more than happy to make like a cha channel trailer, channel intro sort of thing so you guys can go and subscribe to it, go watch the videos, 
and stuff like that. So I just wanted to put that little little thought nugget into your head right there as we sign out. So with that said, guys, I just want to say thank you for all of you who've been there for me on YouTube and off, who's you know watched my videos and it may not have been your cup of tea, but you still supported me in some way, you know, just with some form of encouragement. Here's to many more years on the YouTube fighting the good fight. So with that said, guys, this is the Andy San signing out for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, I'm recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. And today I'm going to be going over some personal life stuff as well as youtube -y stuff because vlog. I just got out of the rain to check my mail. And uh, that's why I'm a little wet on the hoodie today because Western Michigan likes to tease us with rain instead of sunshine for summer, quote unquote. So, but look at what I got in the mail. This, uh, this book that I got from Amazon called How to Shoot Video That Doesn't Suck by Steve Stockman. So I'm gonna read through this bad boy and I'm gonna learn how to shoot video that, well, doesn't suck. So we'll just put this off to the side for now. But anyway guys, uh, I wanna talk about uh, what's been going on YouTube wise first. My video editing gigs have been going very well. I definitely want to improve upon them, get more clients and stuff like that so that way I can make that my main job. So ideally um, I wanna take summers off from school and work full time on the videos. But right now I can't really do that because I'm not making enough from it as of yet. But that's my main goal as far as that goes. And I'm also working on starting up a new channel, as I mentioned in my previous video, doing strictly like Adobe tutorials, as well as web content creation uh, sort of advice and things like that. So basically like a how do I YouTube? And uh, that's been going very good. Uh, I finally came up with a name for it. You can say it's, uh, it's smart. So there's a little hint for you. Once we get some more videos, I'll taken care of, made, you can roll out the new channel and I'll be sure to do a big announcement for it on this channel as well. So you guys can go subscribe to that and uh, get your learn on. So let's move on to, to uh, some personal stuff, which has been the main focus for me as of late. So that's why I haven't really been making videos because a whole lot of stuff's been going on. So uh, first off, uh, got a nice haircut. So <laughs> that's pretty dope. It was getting a little long and it was nice having like the big froey hair because I never had that before because my mom would never let me grow it out that long. It looked like shit, but it needed to be done so I could at least feel like, oh my God, look at all this hair. <laughs> <laughs> and like when I'd move my head, like my hair would move, you know, with it, but it wouldn't be like stuck. So I went, that way, you know, it would be like, mm, 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 mm. I was just getting to be too much of a pain to maintain with the upcoming summer months from what I've been told about summer up here in Michigan. Uh, it's definitely gonna be hot and uh, I don't really want all that hair keeping the, uh, keeping the heat in. So I had to shave it off. And I think this is like the shortest it's been since my Navy days. And even back when I was in the Navy, I don't think I had it this short, uh, unless I was transferring to a new command or something like that. So I could look extra sharp, chiseled. Mm. But in any event, uh, the main thing I want to talk to you guys about personal wise is uh, I'm going to be transferring colleges. So as you guys know, I went to Western Michigan up here in uh, the Kalamazoo Portage area. I had some problems earlier this year, mostly financial problems with the, uh, with the GI Bill and had a lot of setbacks involved with that. And it really affected my grades. And, you know, starting in March, things started turning around. Um, I was able to start paying bills again. And uh, I found my new place, which is where I'm at right now. Things started turning around, but it wasn't really enough to uh, boost my grades back up. I decided to transfer over to the local community college, uh, KVCC, get my GPA back up and work on an associate's degree um, in multimedia and video production because KVCC actually has classes that are, let's just say a little bit more up my alley than Western has. So they have classes over the whole Adobe suite. So definitely want to get my learn on there. So that way I can learn to uh, make better videos and more importantly to improve my workflow and to improve my efficiency in making these videos so I can make more videos in less time because that is the key. So I'm really excited to be starting that up and then uh, as far as like what will happen like when I graduate from KVCC, tentative plans are to move back to Ohio 
and uh, finish up so I can get my bachelor, bachelor's degree. Finish up at a university that's a bit closer to home, but not like too close, you know? So I'd say probably, probably like Dayton area. So that way I could be close to my friends and my family. So in case something happens, you know, I got them uh, close by. That's definitely something that I've been uh, really lacking up here in Kalamazoo. It's just a local support structure. Definitely want to get that established once I uh, get my degree and stuff like that, get my associates, and then go back down there, finish things up, get my four year, and then from there, uh, hopefully, I'll have found a job out in Japan, sell all the things, and uh, transfer out there so I can uh, come back to Japan and do my Andy Japandy thing. Andy Japandy season two, baby! Can't wait. Um, really been looking forward to that. And, uh, you know, going back and looking over at a lot of my old videos really, really gives me the, uh, the natsukashi or the nostalgic feelings. And I uh, really can't wait to start doing Andy Japandy season two. A lot of life changes and uh, hope to get some more videos out for you guys because I want to do more than just the uh, the one video a week thing. I know um, a lot of people have been looking for like daily content and I don't know about that. But you know, my goal is uh, like two to three videos a week instead of just one. But for now, at least one video a week is about all I can do uh, with my other commitments and things like that. So I definitely want to do more. And in order to do more, I need to uh, get some more time. So that's where uh, stuff like Patreon comes in. It helps me uh, to reallocate my time that I would have had uh, working a normal job on the weekends and instead allocate that time towards making more videos. So that's why I'm plugging the Patreon. So. <laughs> but in any event, guys, before I start rambling on for a long ass time, like I tend to do in these vlogs, I uh, better sign off here. So. With that said, this is the Andy Son. Sign up for now, and as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here, and today we're gonna finally be doing a vlog, a little personal life vlog, letting y'all know what's been going on with the old Andy San Samadista for the past couple weeks. I've been very busy, um, busy with uh, part-time work and uh, video editing work, as well as school work. I haven't really been having the time to uh, make videos of my own for a while. I've been doing a couple like clickbaity stuff just to experiment and just to put something out there for you all to see. Some personal life updates on me, uh, in addition to just working myself to the bone. Um, I, there's been some health problems in my family as of late that's really been weighing on me and uh, I'm not gonna get into uh, extreme detail for privacy reasons, but uh, we had a little bit of a health scare very close to the family. And uh, it's just one of those things where uh, it makes me wish I was both closer to my family as well as just further away. Also, my uncle passed away last week at 64 due to brain cancer and my aunt has commissioned me to uh, make a tribute video for him and uh, just finished up a rough draft of it last night and I gotta tell you man like when I first heard the news you know I'm, I'm the kind of person that you know bad news and deaths and stuff like that it doesn't hit me right away it's usually just like oh and like I'm not the kind just like fall to my knees and just start like sobbing and that's just not my style but it usually, usually takes a couple days, maybe like a week or two. And then it's just like, you know, it just kind of all hits me at once. But uh, making that video and uh, the song selections that my aunt chose were uh, really giving me the feels, to be honest with you. And uh, it was really rough finishing that video up. I'm not going to lie. Um, it's probably one of the one of the hardest I've had to do, uh, video editing wise. I hope, uh, hope she enjoys it. Um, I hope the rest of the family enjoys it as well. Uh, apparently she wants to play it at his funeral, just as like a little montage -y thing in the background, I guess. I'm not really gonna get a chance to uh, get out there to be at his funeral because once again, I have to work. 
uh, working both the part-time job as well as doing video editing gigs and then still trying to trying to do well in school I'm doing a lot better than I was last time but you know it's just I always feel like I can do more and that I have time to do more but it's like time is just going by so fast like right now it's almost 5 30 in the afternoon and I was sitting here recording this whole vlog and it just feels like you know time is just passing by so fast be sure to stay in contact with your relatives because you don't know when the next time will be the last time you know i remember the last time i actually saw my uncle was at a uh, a family gathering gosh it had to be last year actually when uh, my brother graduated from high school and there was we threw like a big party over at my aunt's place and uh you know he was just getting out of uh, chemotherapy he's doing really good things were looking good you know you could tell he's he's been through some shit but uh he was still hanging in there doing strong uh staying away from sugar because that's apparently like rocket fuel for cancer i didn't know that then uh earlier this year i guess the cancer which was originally in his lungs uh spread to his brain and uh that's what eventually got him in the end. You know, that incident coupled with some of the health scares that have been going on, my family, aside from that, have just been really fucking with my head, to be honest with you. Um, it's just making me wonder, like, you know, should I move back to Ohio to be closer with my folks? Or should I pursue my dream of going back to Japan more aggressively because it's just one of those things that's really got me thinking, you know, should I pursue my dreams more aggressively and go out back out to Japan as soon as I can? Or should I just transfer to a school that's a bit closer to home so I can be with my family a bit more than I can now? Because being out here in Michigan, I'm so far away from my folks. I didn't think I was gonna be, I didn't think the distance would be that great. I figured, you know, it's a little bit far, but maybe I can make it down like once a month or maybe twice a month or something like that. Same on the weekends, get dinner, whatever. But, you know, <laughs> having to pay the bills and stuff like that out here and trying to catch up has just been really wearing me down. But on the other hand, it's also making me see that maybe Maybe I should pursue my dreams a bit more aggressively because it's making me think, you know, just like, the fuck am I doing here? Like, what the fuck am I doing here? You know, th it just feels like such a step down from being in Japan, you know, just going from every weekend, going out and seeing someplace new, recording someplace new. And it's not just about me, but also showing my friends and my family what life is like out in Japan. You know, my mom would always light up whenever I'd share something on Instagram or share a video and she'd be like, oh, that's a really cool place, Andy. And the rest of my family would too. You know, some of my cousins would be like, wow, I didn't even know that was in Japan. It just, I don't know, I'm torn. I'm really torn because, you know, even when I was in the Navy, I would miss out on births, birthdays, deaths, anniversaries, weddings, all that stuff. I would miss out on a, I missed out on a lot in my five years being in the service. And now that I'm out, you know, I wanted to be there more for my folks and be there more for my friends. But I haven't been there for anybody, not even myself. But, you know, the point being is that the whole thing has just got me torn on whether I want to transfer over to a university in Japan to continue out my education and uh, get a job before I graduate and then transfer from a student visa to a working visa or just transfer to a place that's a bit closer to home and uh, finish out my degree then get a job and go back to Japan because either way I want to go back to Japan I miss it too damn much to do anything otherwise that's about it <laughs> I didn't really have any uh, any good way to end the vlog so if you're still around I want to thank you guys for for sticking around this long in the vlog. And uh, with that said, this is the Andy San. Time for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. 
Catch you later, guys. Hey guys, Andy here, and today I wanted to give you an update on my personal life as well as my YouTube life. And so starting with my YouTube life, um, I've been working on this new series called Instagram Stories, and it's basically my own take on the daily vlog genre videos on YouTube. Um, I've been wanting to do a daily vlog for the longest time, but I never really got around to it because I just kind of thought my own day-to-day -day life was pretty boring and I'd always either be too tired or too busy with school, work, and stuff like that. So for those reasons, I never really got around to doing one, but I found through Instagram stories, it's a lot easier, a lot lower pressure in eventually kind of putting together uh, the clips needed for a daily vlog. I'm just taking little 10 to 15 second clips throughout my day putting them together and boom vlog <laughs> so the vlogs are about two to three minutes on average and they just kind of show little snapshots of my day-to-day -day life and for a series that I didn't announce you guys have been very receptive to it and I want to thank you especially for being so receptive to the series and as long as you guys like it and as long as I like making it there'll be more and in addition to doing the Instagram stories daily vlogs I've also been working on my second YouTube channel, Andy Talks Navy. And in that channel, I've decided to splinter off all of my Navy content to that channel exclusively. So the reason behind that is because I've noticed that a lot of you guys have subscribed to my main channel uh, exclusively for the Navy content, and I don't always put that out. I've decided to just kind of make it its own thing and then my The Andy Son channel will be more of a personal type vlog channel as well as just other random stuff that I'm going to be doing. And then the Andy Talks Navy channel is going to be strictly Navy stuff. And so this dovetails nicely into the third and most important point I want to make about my YouTube updates. And that is just changing the overall format of my videos. So I've been doing a lot of research behind the scenes on different ways of improving my videos. I've um, been looking at maybe adding a green screen or adding more lights or adding a better camera or adding like acoustic sound absorption so that way the room's not so echoey when I do these videos and just general sprucing up of things. But in doing that, I kind of created this logistical nightmare of well, where's the lights gonna go? Where's all this gonna go? Where's the green screen gonna go? Where am I gonna sleep? Because I record this in my bedroom and I only have so much room to put my bed in this room. So it just created a situation where I don't think I'd be able to put all this stuff in here and it would just look like a big mess. So I decided to rethink my approach and think a little bit more outside the box. So I've been binge watching a lot of these new animation channels on YouTube uh, that have been popping up over the past couple years, like uh, Jane Animations, The Odd One's Out, uh, it's Alex Clark, uh, Tony V Animations. I kind of went down the rabbit hole starting with Jaden. You know, I found you know, Odd One's Out and then just kind of progressed and like, okay, oh, who did, who did a collab with who? And oh, these are so cool. And I just really like that style of animation and that style of video. So I really wanna, you know, throw my hat in the ring and give it a shot myself. So I've been purchasing some new equipment to uh, improve my home studio, including uh, this guy right here, a little uh, scissor extension for my other desk on the side here. And I've also purchased a new mic, which isn't here yet, but uh, when it gets here, I'll be plugging it into a mixer, and I'll be doing like a whole video on my new setup, so you don't have to worry about, oh, I'm missing out, I'm not seeing the things. But basically just, I've, I'm working on improving my overall setup to lean more towards an audio-based as opposed to a video-based, because this is a lot more easily managed than putting up lights and trying to tuck in the chin and all this other stuff because I'm just awkward on camera. And even after doing YouTube for over 10 years, I'm still awkward on camera and I still can't always look at the camera and I slouch and my chin sticks out. And it's just, yeah. So <laughs> excuse me for being awkward. 
but anyway, I'm just trying to change up the format because I want to try something new. Um, I've always found a lot of good growth experiences <clears throat> on YouTube when I try something new, like with Andy Cade, which was my Let's Play channel. Um, I found that my quality, uh, especially with my sound quality, improved dramatically when I learned how to do Let's Play videos. Even though the Andy Cade channel, the, the series of Let's Plays that I did, didn't really do all that well, I learned so much from doing those videos. And I think that switching over to an audio slash animation style of video will be the next step in improving my overall videos. What does this mean for like big videos and stuff like that? Well, it means that they're not going to be coming out as frequently as they used to. But that's another reason why I'm doing the Instagram stories. So that way it's not like, well, when's Andy Sand going to make a new video? It's been like two or three weeks. You know, you have something to whet your appetite with. Another question, which dovetails into the personal life thing, that you may be asking is, well, if you're gonna be doing all this animation stuff, then how, how much time are you gonna put into this? And don't you have school and this, that, and the other? And going into the personal life stuff, um, this is probably one of the harder parts of this video to do. And I've like done retake after retake of this video. And we're gonna get it this time. Come hell or high water, we're gonna get the steak. So, dovetailing into the personal life stuff. Um, about two or three weeks ago, I kinda took a hard look at myself and just where I was going, um, both school, personal life-wise, YouTube life-wise, work-wise, and I found that I just wasn't happy across the board and I wanted to make some big changes. So I decided to uh, put a pause on school for the next month or so. I uh, decided to take a break for the second half of the summer semester to work on me. I'll be starting school back up in the fall, so about September-ish, so I'm not gonna be out for a very long amount of time, so you don't have to worry about the whole financials and things like that. I'm only going to be out for about a month or so, and then I'll be starting school back up again proper. But I'm going to be taking this time to work on me and to work on improving my life. And one of, one of the big things with improving my life is improving the organization of my living space. So um, you might notice in some of my Instagram stories videos that I'm showing you the progression of cleaning up and reorganizing my apartment. And that's a big part in my own personal development because I just would look around here and there'd just be boxes and just shit and be so, so disorganized. And I found that that was just causing me a lot of stress because you know I'm very organized in my thoughts, but when my environment isn't organized, I'm disorganized in here. So, I've been working on improving the environment around me and contributing to society by donating old clothes and shoes and stuff that I don't wear anymore. Um, it's a fairly small contribution, but it's something. And it's helping me to better organize my own life. And in addition to doing that, I'm also looking at eating healthier, uh, trying to phase out uh, animal products. Um, I don't want to say I'm going vegan because <laughs> there's a lot of connotations that come with being vegan because it's more about uh, just not eating animal stuff. It's about not having any animal product or anything like that in your house or in your life. And I don't want to go that far. That's a little bit too much for me. But I do want to eat healthier and just get clean because I noticed that, you know, there'd just be some days where my brain would just be all kinds of foggy and I couldn't think. And then there'd be days where I'd wake up and be like, oh man, it's like my brain is awake. And so I feel that if I were to eat healthier and the most important one has been in getting a regular sleep schedule because 
I'd just be so stressed out for assignments and stuff for school that I wouldn't sleep. Um, I would stay up and then when I would sleep, like I'd just be tossing and turning because I'd just be freaking out about this assignment or this project or a test or something. And it would just drive me nuts. And so I found that that was just kind of, a lot of these little things just kind of picked away at my mental well-being. So um, I'm just gonna be taking this short amount of time to focus on me, to get my own shit together, and to work on my own personal development. So um, I just wanna take this time out to say thank you for all your support, you know, watching my videos, giving them likes, uh, sharing videos, um, giving, you know, writing comments down below. Um, I do read all of them, even the spammy ones. <laughs> and even though I may not respond to you, or I may respond to you in, an, you know, maybe a couple days after the fact, um, just know that I do read all the comments and uh, I appreciate every last one of them. Uh, you guys have been so amazing over these past several years, past decade plus. I mean, I've been doing this for a long ass time and you guys have been so supportive of me. And I couldn't have a better crew with me. And, you know, I just can't wait to start this next step in not only my own life, uh, my own personal life, but my own YouTube life as well. And I hope you guys would stick with me throughout the journey. And uh, that's all I want to say. So, with that said, this is the Andy San. Sign up for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Hey, guys, Andy here. And today I want to go over a whole bunch of updates, uh, not only for my channel, but also in my own personal life. Well, before we get into that, though, I want to get these glasses off because they're so reflecty. So we're just going to put those down there. So before we get into the whole updates and stuff like that, I just want to come out to you guys and apologize for the lack of videos on this channel for the past like two to three weeks. Um, we'll be getting more into the reason why behind that uh, a little bit later in the video, but I just want to come out front and tell you guys that I'm sorry for the lack of content on this channel for a while. So some of the more important updates include uh, some equipment changes, setup changes, things like that. So as you guys may have already seen, I've moved the desk around a little bit. I've been experimenting with different positions for recording and stuff like that. One of them included having the desk against that wall over there. I didn't really like the background of that, so I decided to just move it basically where the desk used to be, basically switch the desk with uh, with my bed back there. I like the setup. Um, I also have my second desk in front of this desk so I can put other stuff on it as well, including my little um, acoustic shield. So hopefully that'll help get rid of a lot of these weird reflections, but I still gotta get uh, side panels and stuff for the walls and stuff over there to really nail it down But hopefully it helps at least uh, at least a little bit in addition to that I've also got a new microphone. So I don't know if you guys might have noticed that <laughs> Which is just me talking in the video uh, But I got a new mic and it's the sure PGA 27 which for uh, for fans of Markiplier It's the same mic that he uses I don't have that deep uh, radio voice like he does, so it might, might sound a little different. But uh, I got it hooked up to an old mixer that I got back when I was uh, out at Fleet ASW in San Diego many moons ago. And uh, it was from one of my friends who his roommate was transferring to, I believe, Norfolk at the time. He just had he just left the, uh, the mixer and he was gonna leave to go somewhere else soon too. So he, he saw that I did YouTube videos and he just wanted to give me the mixer. He just said, all, all you need is the power supply. And I was like, all right, cool. And I found out that it was a proprietary power supply, which at the time was kind of hard to come by. And I was like, eh, you know, I already got my own setup and eh, whatever. So I pretty much just left it in the closet for like five, six years and didn't really do anything with it. This past month or so, I've been busy uh, doing a lot of cleaning of my apartment, reorganizing and everything. Eventually dug out the mixer and I was looking at it and I was like, hmm, 
you know, I really want to do something with that thing. Uh, so I looked up on Amazon to see what kind of power supply it uses, how much it costs, things like that. And I found one for like 10 bucks. And I decided, you know what? I'm also going to get a pretty good mic with that too. Um, I was looking at a lot of beginner uh, condenser mics like the Audio Technica AT2020, which is a good mic. Uh, a lot of YouTubers use that in addition to a couple other mics. But the one I wanted to get was the Shure PGA27. And I was looking and it was just way too expensive new. And I was trying to find some used copies and they were only like maybe 10, 20 bucks tops off. But I eventually found a, uh, a very cheap used one. The reason it was so cheap was because it was all scuffed up and stuff, but that's just cosmetic. It's just nothing to do with the uh, the sound, at least I hope. <laughs> but I found one very cheap off of eBay, and then I went and bought an XLR cable, cable from Guitar Center for like 69 cents or something like that, because I ended up using a bunch of Guitar Center gift cards that they would always send me in the email and stuff like that. I uh, got a little, one of those little desk scissor mic boom arm thingies. I think it's a pretty sound investment, especially if I get it like a new mixer or learn how to use my current mixer because a lot of the stuff's pretty new to me and I'm just getting used to uh, dealing with analog stuff. So if it doesn't sound right in this video, I apologize. I'm gonna keep on working on it. So hopefully we can get a good, nice balance going. But in any event, that's gear updates. So now we're gonna move on to channel updates. So this is probably the biggest of the YouTube news that I have to share for you guys. As you guys know, I've been working on a couple separate side channels. And the reason behind this is because I know that a lot of y'all come to my The Andy San channel because you found one of my videos and decided to subscribe. And I definitely wanna thank you guys for doing that. But a lot of people subscribe because of different types of content that I have on my channels. So say somebody subscribes just for my Navy stuff, but if I end up putting out vlogs or you know, editing videos or something random, like fidget spinner videos, um, then they feel kind of confused and they're wondering like, what the heck's old Andy San Samadeshta doing unboxing a fidget spinner? This isn't what I subscribed for, delete. In an effort to give you guys the type of content that you want and to just make it very specific, very niche, um, I've decided to splinter off some of my more popular types of content that are on this channel onto their own separate channels. The idea being that this channel, the Andy San, is gonna be focused more on my own personal life as well as some random miscellaneous videos that I wanna put out there that aren't quite in the same category as my other channels. Uh, the first channel that I did was the Andy Talks Navy channel. And for those who don't know, um, Andy Talks Navy was formerly my NFAX channel. Um, decided to uh, rebrand, retool it to uh, put up all of my Navy content onto that channel. So if you guys are subscribed to this channel just for the Navy content, I'm not gonna be doing it on this channel anymore. I'm gonna be doing it on my Andy Talks Navy channel. And I'll have links and stuff to all the channels down below in the description as well as in the comments. So be sure to subscribe to that channel for all your Navy needs. And uh, in addition to Andy Talks Navy, just this week actually, I've worked on another new channel, which is called Andy Edit. And it's gonna be focused on my editing tutorial videos. So if you came here for my editing stuff, uh, feel free to subscribe to that channel called Andy Edit. Now that we've covered all the youtube -y stuff, let's get into some personal life stuff. I've been going through uh, a really, really bad uh, bit of depression for the past couple months now. And usually, like I have these weird cycles of depression that usually, uh, usually they start in like early fall and then they end around springish. And then during the summer, I'm usually either normal or like just really happy in order to combat it, especially during the winter months. It's because of the changing light schedule. So, you know, during the winter months, there's not a whole lot of sunlight. You get a lot less vitamin D and stuff like that. So they kind of feel that the depression is more of a symptom of a vitamin D deficiency. So what I've been doing is taking vitamin D supplements. And you know, it's it helped for a little bit. One of the weird things is, like I said, during the summer months, usually I'm totally fine. This particular summer, for whatever reason, it, that didn't really happen. Um, I never really got off of the depression cycle. You know, there'd be times where 
I wouldn't even leave the house apartment, I guess in this case. You know, I'd get like very agoraphobic. I would stay in most of the time, either go out shopping at night when there wasn't a whole lot of people around. You know, I'd go and order stuff and have them deliver it here or just get in my car, go through a drive through because I didn't want to go inside a restaurant or go inside a grocery store and pick stuff up. That's one of the reasons why I haven't been doing YouTube videos. You know, just thinking like with every day that passes, you know, I feel like I have to make this, you know, next video like the best it can possibly be because, oh my God, these guys have been waiting like two, three weeks. I gotta come up with something good, right? But yeah, um, going through this whole depression, anxiety um, cycle has been really rough on me. It's one of the reasons why I took some time off of school. Um, I decided to take the summer two semester off from school because I'd managed to save up some money, uh, especially moving out here has been just a godsend for saving up money and not spending a whole lot. And obviously not going outside, it really helps with, uh, with saving money, you know, on gas and buying some things. I managed to save up enough money to just kind of take a break from school anyway. I mean, I'm still working at my normal job, but uh, I'm just not in school right now. And I wanted to take a break because I, I noticed that in addition to the depression and stuff like that, you know, I was falling into bad habits when it comes to doing schoolwork or in my case, not doing schoolwork. So I wanted to give myself a break, get myself, get my situation taken care of. Uh, I am gonna be starting up school um, at the end of this month, beginning of next month in September. So I'll be starting in the fall and I just wanted to take a couple weeks off to get my shit together, take some time away from school so my brain's a little less frazzled and then I can come back to it in the fall with a fresh perspective and, you know, kick ass like, like I know I can. As far as, you know, what my plans are a bit more long-term with school, I don't really know just yet. You know, there are a couple possibilities. Uh, one of them being that I complete my associates here and then transfer to another school where I can complete my bachelor's, which I think to me sounds the most enticing. You know, <laughs> I definitely do want to move back to Japan. Uh, one of the things I was thinking about doing is um, once I get that associates here in Kalamazoo, is seeing uh, if I could transfer out to Temple University out in Japan and then just get my communications degree. It would just depend on how much, how many credits they take, um, how long it would take to get my bachelor's degree out there. You know, with an associates, it probably wouldn't really take all that long. And uh, if it does extend a little beyond the GI Bill, I can apply for uh, vocational rehab, I think. Uh, there's a couple other conditions involved with that, so it's not just a simple, well, I ran out of GI Bill stuff, uh, help. <laughs> You know, there's a couple more things involved with that, but it does give me at least an extra year of schooling should something happen. And plus, you know, there's always scholarships and things like that. So that's just another possibility and something I'm really looking into, but uh, one thing at a time. So definitely want to get the degree first and then transfer to another university, whether that's Temple or someplace a bit closer to home in Ohio. So I don't get taxed as hard come tax season living out in Michigan. So. With that said, this is the Andy Sign. Sign for now, and as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, and I just wanted to give you a quick update on the types of content you can expect from this channel as well as my others. I didn't really get into specifics as far as what to expect. I just kind of said, hey, you know, Navy stuff goes here and editing stuff goes here. I didn't really get into the nitty gritty, but uh, now that I have everything up on the uh, on the screen here, I can kind of go through it one by one. So um, I have a couple unboxings that I did uh, throughout the year that I just didn't get around to editing. So I didn't buy all the stuff at once. I didn't come to a whole bunch of money. It was just kind of a overtime sort of thing. So I got my Samsung Galaxy phone unboxing, uh, my Samsung Gear uh, S2, it's my watch, my smartwatch. Got the unboxing for that, as well as the NVIDIA Shield TV, which is a little media streaming device. I also have a new apartment tour from uh, when I first moved in, so there was like nothing in the apartment at all. So it's an empty apartment tour. And then later on, I'm gonna be doing the uh, filled out 
apartment tour when I got all my stuff over here. I also have a couple tests of the Rode Video Mic Me. There were some kids playing some music at Western, so I decided to record them just to test out to see how good the mic sounded in slightly uh, louder environments. I also got a lost vlog that I wanna kind of chop up a little bit. But in more recent stuff, I have a new episode of Andy Talks Navy where I do a reaction to the Battle Stations video. But the most recent thing that I recorded from last night was the uh, Simple Plan concert from uh, Grand Rapids. Y'all told me to get out of the house, so I did. <laughs> But no, I, I, I did that of my own volition. I saw they were coming out to Grand Rapids, bought some tickets. It's their 15 year anniversary of the uh, No Pads album. And uh, they did the whole thing top to bottom and uh, did a couple extra songs at the end too. It's like, <laughs> I didn't realize how long the concert would be. I figured, you know, since it was a pop punk band, it would just last like maybe an hour tops, but it went like nearly nearly two, so I was like, whoa. In addition to the Simple Plan concert, which uh, I gotta admit right now, it's a little rough at first because I, at first I was using uh, my Sony CX430V, this camcorder right here. Then I had my Zoom H1 attached to the bottom, but I only got like two or three songs in till one of the bouncers was like, you know, <laughs> cut that shit out. So I decided to switch to my smartphone, which, you know, I always find that ironic whenever I go to concerts with a actual camera camera and bouncers would kind of look at me funny and be like, what the fuck are you doing? Like get the fuck out or just stop the camera or whatever. But meanwhile, it was like all these girls and stuff like cell phones out like, oh my God. So I recorded the rest of the concert on my cell phone but I hadn't prepared to record on my cell phone. So my memory card filled up really quickly and I had to change to uh, internal storage like in the middle of one of the songs. But uh, after that point, it went pretty well. Uh, there's some crowd surfing moments where I nearly got bonked on the head. So there's a couple dodgy camera shakes and stuff every once in a while. But for the most part, it went pretty, uh, pretty okay. And the sound quality, I never recorded a concert with the uh, the Galaxy phone before, so I didn't know how it was gonna turn out. But I figured that there might be a slim chance it might turn out okay. And from some of the clips that I'm hearing, I mean, it clips a little bit, but I'm gonna do my best to kind of smooth it out as best I can. I mean, it is cell phone footage, so it's not gonna be the best, but I'm gonna do what I can. But in addition to that, I also have an unboxing of my Fool Telematic Telecaster copy. One of my friends who runs the uh, Fool Audio Research Company sent me a free copy. That's thanks for helping him out. But the last thing I wanna talk to you guys about, the next Day of the Swan. So as you guys know, I'm a big fan of the late great Roger Swan and earlier this year I remastered his Tokyo Swan series of videos to coincide with the uh, seven year anniversary of his passing. For uh, this coming September, I want to do another Day of the Swan where I upload like old episodes from him. Uh, but this time it's going to be Iwate Swan, so it's not going to be quite as much as Tokyo Swan. I'm going to upload those on September 11th, 2017. And the reason for that is it's going to coincide with the 10 year anniversary of Roger Swan's first arrival to Tokyo to start up the Tokyo Swan series. That's what's going to be coming out uh, for my channels. Hope you guys tune into the videos. And with that said, this is the Andy Sign. Sign up for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. And today I have a whole lot of stuff that I want to talk to you guys about. So, without any further ado, let's get right into it. So the first thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is what happened to me this past weekend. Um, I went to visit my baby brother down in North Carolina where he's stationed at um, to see him get married and to finally meet my uh, sister-in-law and uh, to catch up with family as well. And it took about nine some odd hours to get down there from Michigan to North Carolina. At the end of the journey, it was good seeing him again, good seeing uh, family as well. And I definitely wanna wish him the best of luck in his, uh, his future married life. And so the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is next week I start the fall semester at my community college and I'm very nervous but I'm also really excited. And uh, as you guys know, I did take a break during the summer two semester to relax and to just get in a better headspace 
for the following semesters. And although I do feel much better now than at the end of my, the summer one semester, I know that depression will try to bring me down again. So I do need to be cautious of the signs and to know when to seek help before it completely takes over. And I do have a lot better tools at my disposal for when the black dog comes to visit me again. And also with school starting up next week, I think that it's a good time to talk to you guys about what you can expect from me on YouTube, as well as the upload schedule for my YouTube channels. And so in addition to the unboxing videos and others that I mentioned in my previous vlog, I want to also talk about the upcoming Day of the Swan. On September 11th, 2017, to commemorate the 10 year anniversary of the late great Roger Swan's first arrival to Japan to study abroad at Keio University, I'll be uploading the entire remastered version of his Iwate Swan video series. And like my Tokyo Swan remastered video series, these videos will not be monetized by me and are being uploaded as tribute to someone who has had a major influence on me as a YouTuber, as well as to bring awareness to his scholarship, which was set up at his alma mater, Western Michigan University, which at the time it's recording since its institution in 2011 after Roger's death, has sent six people to study abroad in Japan as Roger did a decade ago. And hopefully with more funding, we can send more people there to learn about Japan from a firsthand experience. And as far as my own uploading schedule goes, my goal is to upload a new video at least once a week per channel, obviously aiming for more as time allows. So for the Andy-san channel, I want the uploading schedule to be when I want to make a video and not just because it's that time of the week to do so. So in that particular channel's case, uh, the weekly video schedule is more of a soft goal than anything set in stone. But the Andy Edit and the Andy Talks and Navy channels, the weekly upload minimum is definitely a hard goal. And if I can do more, I will, but you'll get at least one video a week from those channels pending outside of circumstances such as midterms or finals. In those cases, I'll try to do a video beforehand so it shouldn't be an issue, but I just wanna make that known so just in case something happens, you guys know what's going on. And something else I definitely do wanna talk about in this update video as well as in a separate update video for that particular channel. When it comes to the Andy Talks Navy channel, there's been a lot of members in the military vlogging community that are either stopping their military content or reducing it. And with that happening, I know that a lot of you, including myself, are worried about the future and the viability of the military vlogging community. I just want to make it known here that I personally won't be stopping making military content on my Andy Talks Navy channel until I'm ready to call quits and that won't be anytime soon. So just to give you guys a little bit of background on me, um, I originally started making Navy videos back when I joined in 2010 because I couldn't find any information on Navy life online because usually it was uh, like outdated or it was Hollywoodized or it was just too like pro-military without addressing any or a minimal amount of negative aspects on military life. And obviously being active duty from 2010 to 2015, I couldn't talk critically about the Navy, but I tried to be as neutral as possible. And I also put a preface or a disclaimer in every video saying that it's based on my own experiences and opinions so as not to confuse what I say as an official statement from the Navy or any other officially linked entity. After getting a ton of the same boot camp questions, among others, I did decide to stop making Navy videos for a time and instead shifted to making travel videos, showing off all the ports that we'd hit as well as life on deployment. I even got to see my dream of living in Japan come true when I got stationed in Yokosuka from 2013 to 2015, and I made a lot of videos in Japan as well. Now, when I got word in 2015 that I was officially getting ADCEP due to my weight issues, something that I might talk about in a separate video, I then looked up videos of veterans to see what I can expect as someone transitioning from sailor to civilian again. And in my search, I found JT Suits. What a fam! And he reignited my passion for helping out others who are thinking about joining the military as well as helping those who are transitioning to readjust to civilian life. And I decided that once my DD-214 was in my hands, I would work on a new series of Navy videos where I could talk more openly and if need be, critically, about the Navy. And that's where the Life After Navy series was made. Now to dispel a little a little bit of confusion involving the, the series names. Um, the series Andy Talks Navy is basically the same as my Life After Navy series, but I wanted to make it non-sequential so that way each episode would be its own standalone episode. So that way if you missed episode 10, for example, you wouldn't be worried about being lost 
watching episode 11. And so that's pretty much what I wanted to say in this video. And with that said, this is the Andy Son. Sign up for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Be sure to like and subscribe. <laughs> Bye. Before we begin the video, I do want to say that I'm going to be selling some of my old stuff on eBay that I don't use anymore in order to put some more money back in my savings. Uh, recently, my job cut my hours a little bit. While I'm not going to be homeless or anything, I did have to dip into my savings to make up for it. And with winter break just a few months away, I need a really good nest egg to get me through it without BH from school. And once the auctions are alive, I'll be sure to post a quick video with links and all that stuff so you can check out my wares. All right, now we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, and it's official guys, I've been back in America for two years now. So the 15th of September marks my two year anniversary of returning to America after having lived abroad in Japan for about two years and some change. And coming up later next week, the 25th of September will also be marking my two year anniversary of getting out of the US Navy, but I'm gonna be making a separate video for that. Coming back to America after having lived abroad in Japan was a major reverse culture shock for me, not only in reacclimating to America American life, but getting back into my regular old civilian life, as well as going back to college after almost a decade the first time I tried it, back in the Stone Age, circa 2004-2007. Jeez, I'm old. And I faced many new challenges and have been knocked down a lot over these past two years, but I've always managed to get back up again. And my ongoing battle with depression will be something that I always have to deal with. And I'll have my good days and I'll have my bad ones. And so I wanna talk about uh, some YouTube updates. Dealing with YouTube schedule commitments will be much more difficult than I'd initially thought before the semester started. So everything is gonna have to be TBD to be determined uh, for the time being. I still wanna upload at least one video a week, but doing it for three channels right now is a bit much for me at the moment. I have several new video ideas already written out and I want to dedicate a huge block of my time to just batch record everything. So on days that either my school or my work schedule and or my mental health is just overloaded, I can at least sit down and edit something or just already have something to schedule in advance. And speaking of videos, I have several from the archives that I've recorded earlier this year that I still need to get out, mostly unboxed things that I did uh, earlier in the year, and also some just miscellaneous ones as well, like my much long overdue 11 year YouTube anniversary. It's about what, six months overdue? <laughs> as well as my moving video, which is about as long. And so a little something old and a little something new are things that you can expect moving forward with my channels. And with that said guys, this is the Andy Son. Sign up for now, and as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later guys, bye. Be sure to like and subscribe. <laughs> hey guys, Andy here, and today I just wanna give a quick update on what you can expect from future YouTube videos from me. After looking through the analytics of my various channels, I decided to move all of my content over to my main channel, The Andy Song, while still distributing genre-specific content such as my Navy content and my video editing content to their respective channels. So the Andy Sound is gonna be a hub channel that's gonna host all of my content, whereas Andy Talks Navy is gonna host my Navy content, and Andy Edit is gonna host my video editing content exclusively. If you just wanna tune into the Navy videos, you have your own channel for that. If you just wanna tune into the video editing tutorials, you have your own channel for that. But if you wanna see all the things, you also have a channel for that, and that is youtube.com slash the Andy Sound, which by the way, also celebrated a big milestone in 555 subscribers, so all fives. And I definitely gotta thank you guys for subscribing to this humble little channel here. I know I haven't been the best or the most consistent with uploading schedules and things like that. Various life things get in the way, like school, work, and other obligations, and my own mental health. I just wish I could do more for you guys. I really do. I enjoy doing YouTube. I enjoy interacting with you guys, not only on my own videos, but in other people's videos as well that I enjoy. But judging from analytics and reactions from you guys, you don't really like the daily uploaded stuff. And I, I understand, you know, it's a lot of stuff to get out there, to push to you guys. And quite frankly, I get kind of tired of doing daily uploads myself. Um, I went back and look at my little uh, quick experiment in daily uploading with uh, the Instagram stories, vlogs. It just became apparent that daily uploading is not really my thing. I wanna at least do weekly uploads. 
And if I can do more, I'll do more, but at least one video a week. And I think I've been fairly consistent with that, with a few bumps in the road here and there, but you know, I've made up for it, I feel. In any event, I want to thank you guys once again for all the love in the comments, all the new subscribers. Got to give a big shout out to you guys. And with that said, this is the Andy Son. Sign for now. And as always, we'll see you <laughs> next time. <laughs> Catch you later, guys. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. And before we get started with this video, I just want to give you guys a couple quick updates on future Andy Son videos and stuff like that. I did a whole bunch of editing this week. I just like went totally ham on that shit. Put together a whole bunch of videos and also scheduled some of my older videos from my other channels to be uploaded to my main channel, The Andy Son. As I said in my big update video, I'm going to be making The Andy Son my hub channel. So it's going to host all of my content. Whereas like Andy Talks Navy and Andy Edit and stuff like that those are gonna host specific content you know namely my Navy and my video editing tutorials those are gonna be pushed out throughout the week but I have videos scheduled out all the way to like mid-November at this point so definitely not gonna be a shortage of videos from uh, from my channel anyway I was watching some of my old uh, Andy Japani videos and it really got me feeling nostalgic, that old natsukashi of living in Japan. And not only just actually living in Japan, but some of the experiences that I had there as well. Meeting great people, visiting great places, and just, you know, living my dream. Because as I've said in other videos, living in Japan has been pretty much my lifelong dream. I got to live that dream, and I lived there for a little over two years. I um, stationed out there in Yokosuka. I, I went through a lot of bad times out there. You know, it's one thing to live in Japan, but it's another thing to be stationed out in Japan when you're constantly on call and you don't know what's gonna be happening you're just on a need-to-know basis it's it's very stressful and I had to deal with that stress a lot but despite all the bad stuff that happened to me out there there was a lot of good stuff like as corny as it sounds you know making these anti Japani videos was the one thing that really helped keep me going I would also have a whole bunch of ideas I'd write down in a little notebook I'm gonna go to this place in Tokyo I'm gonna go to this restaurant or I'm gonna go to this place in uh, Kanagawa and I just I had like a rhythm and a flow in like the latter half of 2015 I didn't really go out as much I stayed mostly in the Kanagawa area and that was mostly just because I was feeling like very tired at the end of the day I was very stressed out and plus I also wanted to show off some of the more local parts of Kanagawa because like Everybody and their brother does Tokyo videos, and that's not to talk uh, disparagingly about the Tokyo vloggers, it's just that a lot of stuff out there is very well covered, but not a lot of people cover stuff in Kanagawa, at least not nearly to the degree that Tokyo is covered, so I wanted to do more of like a local look. But, you know, I just I had a lot of good experiences, and even just in my own apartment, you know, overlooking Tokyo Bay. I think one of the best, best times that I had in my apartment was uh, Christmas. Um, it was the first Christmas that I had where I was away from my parents. Thankfully, I had my roommates there with me. I wanted to do something uh, special for them, so I went out to uh, the 7-Eleven right across from uh, the Minkasa Gate in Yokosuka and bought them a Christmas cake. We just had a good old time, lighting the uh, candles and stuff like that. It kind of made me feel, uh, feel all right, despite uh, being thousands of miles away from my folks. But it's just little things like that, you know? It doesn't have to be the big moments, like meeting one of my personal heroes, uh, Marty Friedman. And there's the air raid sirens. Oh shit. <laughs> Duck and cover, North Korea's attacking. No. <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. I'm just sitting here in my single room apartment here in Kalamazoo, Michigan. There's really no excitement, really in my life. Jesus, everybody signs are loud. Don't worry, they test like every Saturday, so it's okay. It's, it's just a test. It's just a test, bro. I don't miss being in the Navy. Don't get me wrong. I <laughs> like, there's parts of my life in the Navy that I enjoyed. There's also a lot of stuff that I didn't enjoy. I didn't enjoy the monotony, didn't enjoy the bureaucratic nature of the Navy. Getting to do some cool shit every once in a while kind of helped me get through it. Overall, I think it was a very positive experience, even if you lump in the negatives, if anything. It helped make me into a better overall person. I still do miss some of the perks, like visiting foreign ports, living in a swank ass apartment in Yokosuka, Japan. That was just the icing on the cake, the Christmas cake. <laughs> it just got me thinking, watching these old In Japan videos of when I'm gonna come back to Japan next. 
you know, I want to come back, obviously, after I get my degree. Senior year, I'm going to be shopping around for employment so I can get my visa and move out there, just sell all my shit for, like, plane ticket money and whatever. I know a lot of foreigners don't like how the Japanese are very closed off with foreigners, but I kind of like that, actually. I mean, for me, as an introvert, it takes a lot of pressure off of me to be this outgoing, extroverted person that I'm not. So if I know that they're not going to want to talk to me or sit next to me on the train, which that's not really a thing. Like I've been to Tokyo a whole bunch of times where I was super busy. I'm always sandwiched next to like some old lady or like some old dude with way too much cologne. Like it's never a, oh my God, we got to give the foreigner some space. Like they never give, they never give me any space. But and this is a lot of little things that I like and just the fact that I felt very safe out there. And I just wanted to get some stuff out there, just some thoughts from the old head brain. So vlog's not very organized. Uh, I apologize. So with that said, guys, this is the Andy sign. Sign it for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. All right, and we're recording. Hey, gang, Andy here. And welcome back to my monthly update videos for this. November 2017. Woo. So it's been a while since I've done some of these uh, monthly update videos. For those of you who haven't seen it or haven't seen it in a while, in these monthly update videos, I'm gonna be going over some personal life stuff as well as youtube stuff. Let's start off with the monthly update videos themselves. So as you guys know, at the beginning of 2017, I decided to get rid of the monthly update videos, uh, mostly because um, I was afraid of their overall shelf life, but uh, I was doing some uh, video cleaning earlier. Um, I typically do that for some of my old videos, go back in, uh, change title, tags, descriptions, stuff like that, just to make it a bit more searchable for you guys to find stuff and just to do an overall cleanup for stuff. And I came across some of my old uh, monthly update videos from like 2012, 2013-ish. And uh, I noticed that even though it does have a lot of then current information, it's also kind of just a look at uh, the progression of my channel and myself, where I'm at, what I'm doing, that sort of thing. So in a way, it's a little bit more vloggy than even my vlogs. So looking at it from that perspective, I think that it's best to bring back the monthly update video series. Um, as far as like my own YouTube channel and videos and stuff like that, um, we got finals gonna be coming up later on this month. In addition to that, I'm also working for my good old buddy, Tikio Sam, on his videos. Uh, for those who don't know, I am the main video editor for the Tikio Sam channel, so I edit his Tikio rants, Tikio plays, and a couple other miscellaneous videos for the past year or so. Some of the most notable examples of that would be the What's in My Bag video and the At the Times Recording Recent video for Halloween 2017, which I put a lot of effort in that video and I'm really pleased with the response that it's gotten from the Tikio Sam fam. Really put a lot of uh, love and troop and spraying into that one. With all that being said, um, as far as like my own videos goes, at least with this month anyway, I don't really know what else I'm gonna be putting out. I still have a couple videos from the archives that are scheduled out to like mid-November. It's not like you're gonna see nothing from me, but I'm gonna be pretty busy for the next month or two. It's just gonna be a busy old time for the old Andy Sam Sam Adeshta. Um, those of you know I'm wearing, uh, one of Solid Monsters t-shirts. I'm wearing this to celebrate 10 years of the Solid Monster Sounds Off podcast. So moving on from that into uh, some more personal news. Um, I'll be honest with you guys, I've been going through some really uh, tough shit for the past couple weeks now. Um, I've been dealing with some uh, problems, medical, uh, automotive re related as well. Uh, and it's been tough on me, you know, even leaving the house, going to school and whatnot. Uh, it's just made it very uh, difficult on me mentally, emotionally, all that stuff. And uh, thankfully the medical and the automotive stuff has been taken care of, so that's a big weight off my chest. And uh, things are starting to look up again. You know, I'm feeling a lot better. So if you, if you couldn't tell from the earlier, earlier stuff, uh, but the fact remains is that um, I do have these anxiety issues and they sometimes just show up. You know, it's very 
hard to track when these things happen. It's not just a, well, I'm going through something. So, you know, it's not like being traditionally sick where it's like, oh, I got the flu, shucks. I'll just stay inside, drink some water, tea, orange juice, whatever, and just kind of wait it out. Um, these things can happen just for random stuff. Like, I think this recent anxiety episode happened because of the car issues and also had a little bit of a medical issue. It wasn't anything life-threatening, so you don't have to worry about it, but uh, I was sick for about a week and uh, the sickness and the whole car issue and everything uh, kind of compounded into a whole bunch of stress that really fucked up my sleep schedule, to be honest with you. So that compounded things even more and uh, I just became a fucking ball of nerves, basically. So. Um, thankfully now, the sickness is gone, the car is fixed, and, you know, getting ready to, uh, kick ass again at school. So, I'm gonna be talking to a therapist, hopefully this week, um, trying to get something scheduled, but this time of the year it's pretty difficult because I'm not the only one going through these issues, especially during this time, you know, finals coming up and whatnot. Uh, so I gotta talk with my therapist, let them know what's going on, why I haven't been to school, and stuff like that. And uh, hopefully uh, I can talk to my teachers and we can work something out. Cause you know, the reason that I'm not doing well in school isn't because I don't know the material, or the material's too hard, you know, I gotta get a tutor or something like that. You know, far from it. Like the material uh, to me at least is pretty easy and my instructors are fairly chill, but it's just a lot of build up shit in the head brain that kind of fucks with me on a day to day basis. And then when I want to go out and do something, whether it's go to school or whatever, you know, there's always that little voice in my head saying, you know, I don't do it. You know, just, eh, you still got enough groceries in the house. Maybe you can just stay here for a little bit. You don't have to go outside with gas, eh, you know. Definitely want to get this thing taken care of, um, get myself set up on a path of success, something I know I can do, get my degree, get that paper, and uh, move on to the next chapter in my life. And speaking of which, since I'm on the GI Bill, it's a little bit more difficult for me to uh, study abroad than it would be if I was just on like a normal scholarship or uh, grants or however else go to college. Um, the GI Bill has very specific rules involving that. Um, it can cover international schools, but the amount that it covers varies depending on the school, country, all that kind of stuff. So I didn't want to end up owing the school money because I wanted to study abroad. And plus BAH may or may not be offered outside of the country. So that's another risk I'd be having to take in just simply transferring to an international school. And as far as study abroads are concerned, um, the GI Bill does not cover study abroads unless it is explicitly needed for my degree. So the only other option would be to find an American school with a campus out in another country. And the main one uh, for Japan in particular is Temple University. Basically, if I were to transfer out there, I would get BAH the same as if I was living at their main campus, which I think is in Boston. But I'd be out in Japan doing Andy Japandi season two being able to collaborate a bit more directly with Sam and others, uh, hopefully being able to get out more good videos, not just on my channel, but his channel as well. And uh, just doing good things, man, because I, th I feel like things aren't really clicking out here in Kalamazoo, Michigan. You know, in a lot of ways, it's a, basically a scaled up version of my hometown, which is, it's nice to visit, but as far as living there again, just really isn't a viable option for me at this point. So before I go though, there is one little bit of kind of YouTube -y news that I wanted to cover. I noticed that my uh, Andy Edit channel has been taken down from YouTube. Um, the reason behind it, I'm not entirely sure. YouTube just said that the channel violated some kind of a TOS agreement or some, something like that. I sent them a uh, response just basically asking what happened 
what part of the TOS did I violate? Was there some kind of community guidelines violation? So I don't know if my channel was hacked or if something else happened. I don't know. They just terminated my channel without telling me, you know, aside from the general, well, your channel violated community guidelines. It's like, what community guidelines? What did I do? And apparently this is something that's been going around YouTube for about a week or so now. I've been looking it up on Reddit and there's a couple other channels that have been affected as well. So I'm hoping that this all gets cleared up by YouTube in the following weeks and we'll be able to get the channel back up and running soon. But in the meantime, I still have all my old Andy Edit stuff on my main channel. Once I get more information about the status of the channel and if we can bring it back or whatever, then I'll be sure to let you guys know. But until then, that's all I got. So with that said, this is the Andy Sign signing for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, and welcome to this November 2017 monthly update video, part two. So yeah, I got a lot of stuff to cover that's been happening to me for the past uh, couple weeks since the last update video. Got a nice new little location for my uh, computer and stuff, so I figured I'd use that in the background even though you can barely see it, but eh, it is what it is, right? So let's get into uh, the usual monthly update video stuff. So this is your first time seeing these things. On my monthly update videos, I go over my personal life stuff as well as my youtube -y stuff. So let's get into the youtube -y stuff first. So at the time it's recording, I finally finished uh, moving all of my videos from my other channels over to my main channel, youtube.com slash where you should be watching this video at, right? So, um, and the main reason for that is that is because I wanted to make the Andy San my hub channel. So it basically hosts all of my content, which includes my Navy related content, my video editing content, as well as my own personal life content, vlogs and updates and such. So. That way I have my satellite channels or my secondary channels um, be content specific. So if you're just into the Navy stuff, you have a channel for that. And if you're into the editing stuff, well, shout out luck there. <laughs> Until very recently, I've had my own editing channel called Andy Edit. But for some reason or another, YouTube algorithms and whatever's going on with YouTube, uh, they decided to shut my channel down for some reason. I sent them an email asking, hey, why did you guys shut down my channel? I didn't put anything questionable up there. It used to be my Let's Play channel, but I had since made those videos unlisted and had converted it over to my Adobe editing channel. So I put up all my uh, Premiere Pro tutorials and was planning on just basically making that my editing channel. They decided to just pull the plug on the whole thing earlier this month. I sent them an email just basically asking like why they just pulled the plug. It's not like one of my videos got copyright struck or anything like that or showed any kind of questionable content. They just decided to pull the plug on the whole darn thing. I decided to just move all of my um, Andy edit stuff that was on that channel that wasn't on my current channel from now on You'll just be seeing Andy edit stuff on this channel. So sorry guys <laughs> kind of is what it is uh, YouTube and such so anyway, we move on so I'm also in addition to making my own videos I'm also the main video editor for Tikio Sam my good old buddy out in the J-Pans and uh, we've been just uh, killing and grilling it on uh, video editing and such. I put out a lot of uh, Tikio rants, a couple really good Tikio react videos, and just a couple like Tikio vlogs and stuff like that. And we've also made the debut of a new uh, series that Sam is doing called Tikio Talks, where he sits down and does a big interview with a special guest that happens to roll in Japan. And for the debut episode, we got Jayo Nation. He rolled into Japan recently and uh, had a nice sit down talk at a traditional Japanese restaurant known as TGI Fridays. <laughs> there is some more stuff brewing on the horizon that I think is very interesting, although sadly I am not at liberty to discuss it at this moment because it's all very prelim stuff and I don't want to jinx it. So uh, just know that there's a lot of big stuff on the horizon. So in any event guys, uh, moving on from YouTube -y stuff 
to video editing stuff to more just like a personal life sort of thing. Despite all the success I've been seeing with editing Tikio Sam's videos and with my own channel, which at the time it's recording is just five subscribers away from reaching 600. So we're on the road to 1K once again. Reclaim the throne, baby. So, but in addition to all that, uh, personal life wise, as you guys know, uh, things really haven't been going all that smoothly for me as of the uh, past couple months or so. Um, I've had, I had a really bad um, anxiety, mental breakdown, I don't know what you classify it as. And uh, I was also really sick with a skin infection um, a couple weeks ago, so I was on antibiotics. And for some reason that kind of fucks with everything internally which messed with my sleep schedule, which again compounded upon all the stress and anxiety from before. It's just a recipe for disaster. So thankfully the majority of all that, you know, in here is, uh, is done for the time being. Uh, and I've been working on making a lot of big changes in my life. Um, most notably my sleep schedule. Um, that's been a major a uh, change for me and a change for the better I think um, especially with winter months having a lot less sunlight during the day I thought it would just make more sense to wake up earlier so that way you would have more sunlight and just feel more productive and that's just what I've been feeling lately so I'm not by nature a morning person I despise waking up in the mornings but if it's for my own health mental physical whatever you know, I've kind of gotten to that point where it's just, it's too painful to sleep in as opposed to just wake up earlier. So I just, I find myself to be a lot more productive, my mood's a lot better, and uh, I want to continue going down this path. Same with the diet too, man. I don't know if you guys noticed, since getting out of the Navy, I've kind of put on a little bit of weight. So, <laughs> but with nice camera angles and good shadowing, I don't know if you guys can tell. Shut up, shut up, don't say that in the comments. But any event guys, uh, it's no secret, I've gained a lot of weight since coming back to America from Japan and I'm not gonna make any excuses for it. I put the shit in my mouth, literally. So it is what it is, but what I can do is uh, work towards eating better. You know, not just to lose the weight and I'm not like starting my own like weight loss series and claiming to have all the secrets and all that kind of stuff because I don't. Um, I'm doing this not really to lose weight again to be cosmetically appealing but also it's mostly just for my mental health at this point. That all, all these changes that I'm making, diet, waking up early, all this stuff is for my mental health. And you know, if my physical health is improved along the way, hey, I'm not gonna complain about that, but uh, we gotta take this one step at a time, guys. And I'm gonna be making some changes to my diets and I don't want any diet advice. You know, I love you guys, but uh, there's like a, a whole cavalcade of diet advice online, so I don't wanna get barraged with more information. So I appreciate the help, but I'm not gonna be taking any diet advice from you guys. So, and I say that out of love. So, in any event, I'm gonna be making those changes to help improve my mental clarity, my mood, keep my blood sugar at an even keel, which is kind of the key to this whole thing. And uh, we're just gonna go on from there, man. And uh, so far, just, just with waking up early and having a good breakfast, I've been feeling a lot better, you know? Uh, I just feel, I feel more productive, you know, I feel like I'm getting more stuff done, you know, whereas it used to be I'd spend the wee hours of the night working on stuff for Sam or for myself, instead of the wee hours, you know, spent working on that stuff, I'm spending it in the mornings, and I just feel like I get more stuff done, not just with this stuff, but also just stuff around the house, you know, taking care of laundry and groceries and other fun, boring adult stuff. You know, get that all taken care of. But anyway, guys, I think I've rambled and raved long enough in this video. So with that said, this is the Andy Sign. Sign for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. All right, and we're recording. 
Hey gang, Andy here, and welcome to my December 2017 update video for, you guessed it, December 2017. Woo! So yeah, as always with my monthly update videos, I'm going to be going over some personal life stuff as well as youtube stuff. And this month, they both sort of intermingle with each other, so there's not really going to be as clear cut of a, this is my youtube stuff, and this is my personal life stuff sort of thing like I normally do with these. So, with that said guys, let's get right into it. And let's start off with the elephant in the room, the fact that I haven't been uploading that many videos on my YouTube channel. Now I know some of you may be a little concerned about that, oh he's quitting YouTube, or if you've been reading about my mental health problems, you know, maybe you think there's something a bit darker behind the reason why I'm not uploading as much. Not gonna lie, a little bit has to do with the mental health stuff, but the main reason behind my lack of uploads uh, recently is a bit more positive. As you guys know, I am the main editor for my good old buddy, TKO Sam, on his channel. Um, I edit the TKO Rants, TKO Reacts, and most recently is TKO Cinema series on his channel, in addition to other little videos that he uh, commissions me to do. So those have been picking up quite a lot for this coming month. So I've been really busy getting a lot of stuff out for that. I'm also picking up a couple more video editing gigs for uh, some other people. Been pretty busy with that, <laughs> working on a lot of YouTube videos. So my brain is pretty frazzled with that. In addition to, you know, other personal life stuff, school, wrapping up, things have been pretty busy on my end. Mental health wise, it's been kind of hit or miss for me. You know, I've had some victories, but I've also had some defeats. It's a continuing learning process, you know, dealing with mental health and, you know, anxiety, depression, all this kind of stuff. You know, it's an, I'm not just gonna wake up one day and be like, ha ha, I have it solved and I'll never suffer anxiety or depression again, ha ha. You know, the only thing I can do is just chip away at it bit by bit, get a little bit better every day. And I feel like I'm doing that. And one of the main things, as I've explained in the previous video, that I've been doing is um, changing my wake up patterns. So I used to wake up around nine, 10 ish at the earliest. And those are only on days where I would actually go to class. But I've been doing it a lot more consistently, um, been doing it daily actually. I think the latest I would wake up would be like nine o'clock in the morning. I've been trying to wake up um, with the sun basically. So, you know, when the sunrise happens, that's usually when I try to wake myself up. So around eight o'clock when the sun rises, School-wise, you know, things haven't really been going so well for me. And I think one of the main reasons behind that is just the area. Nothing against Kalamazoo, Michigan. I mean, for a lot of people, it, this is a really fun, enjoyable place. And you know, good on you if you're from the area or living in the area and you like it. But for me, it's just not where I need to be. During one of my anxiety depressive low points, I really uh, examined just some things in my life that I'm not really happy about. Now the apartment, the rent and everything is pretty cheap. I'm able to really get my cost of living down to a very small amount, so that's good. But as far as just life enjoyment, it's not really all that good. It's kind of hit or miss. One of the things that I'm looking to improve upon is my own satisfaction with life. And, you know, noticing a lot of the trends and stuff that I've been doing or not doing, including posting a lot of like old pictures on my Instagram. I enjoy those photos. I think they're nice. But when all I have to offer is photos from like two, three, four, five years ago, it just really weighs down on me and shows that I feel like I've put my life on pause in a way, moving up here to try to go to school and everything. You know, I lost out on a key component to success, which is surrounding yourself with other people. You know, being in the military for five years, constantly having, you know, people around you all the time, I initially just wanted to break from all that and just kind of wanted to do my own thing. You know, having been out of the military for over two years now on my own, by myself. It's kind of lost its luster after a while, so I'm looking to uh, make some new connections and to network and to really put myself out there. Speaking of Instagram, if you don't know or aren't following me, instagram.com slash the I made the announcement on there first, but I want to officially make it here on YouTube. In 2018, my main goal is to move out to Los Angeles. And I know that's a really big goal 
I'm gonna get a lot of responses of like, hey Andy, congrats on finally making the move. You know, you were doing good things and stuff like that. But I'm also gonna get a lot of people saying, you shouldn't really do that. You should just like get a full-time job, grow the fuck up. You're 32 years old. Oh, by the way, I had a birthday this past week on December 7th. So 32, what you gonna do? Regardless of all that, I'm gonna be moving out to LA in 2018. Now. I've also done a lot of work in getting myself set up over there. I've been contacting some colleges out there, get myself started, and you know, things are definitely looking up. So now it's all a matter of just saving up the money to move out to LA. Once I go out and transfer to college out there, I'll be able to collect on the GI Bill, so I'll be able to continue to make some money out there while also working on some part-time hustling gigs, continuing my video editing for Sam and others, and just build myself up that way. But I have to be where the action is, and that's ultimately the reason why I want to move out to LA. Now, don't get me wrong, I do love Japan. I know I've been saying that I want to move out to Japan once I graduate and all that kind of stuff, but I really took a long, hard look at myself and realized that as much as I love Japan, me being there isn't going to get me to where I need to be career-wise. It's definitely a possibility, a very strong possibility, that I'd be coming back to Japan, whether it's to visit or maybe for a year or two sabbatical, but I don't want to make any plans about that just yet. So I see that my camera is getting pretty hot, so I think we'll end things here. If I miss anything, I'll probably just make a part two to this video. So, with that said guys, this is the Andy San, sign for now, and as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later guys, bye.